Revival, where people from all over the world can come and be touched by God. This is the place that you want to come and get filled up with the Holy Spirit, get filled up with the presence of God. Come be a part of a church that is bringing people to a place of maturity in their Christian walk. Here at the River Church is, you're gonna catch revival. You're gonna catch the presence of God. You're gonna catch the fire of God. Where we want to see the lost saved and the backslidden return to Christ. The River, a place that is preparing people for eternity, for heaven. My wife, Adonica, and I, as well as our entire church family, The River, would like to invite you to join us on Sunday mornings if you're anywhere in the Central Florida region. Come and be a part. Call or log on today and find out how you can be a part of the family at The River. Don't miss out on what God has in store for you. The River, church with a difference. Around 2003, I came to a graduation service. It was May 2003. My cousin was actually graduating RBI, she and her husband. And uh, at the end, as, as always, at the end of that, that uh, graduation service, Pastor Rodney gave an altar call for those that felt called to full-time ministry and that would come and give nine months of their life. And if I'm honest with you, I didn't want to do that. I'd already been to college. I didn't see another need to go to college, but something was in me that said, you need to go. And I couldn't stay in my seat. And as I've said all over the world to young people and, peop and, and old people too alike, I, I couldn't stay in my seat. And that August, I came on a Wednesday night, August 2003, for registration. I can still tell you where I sat in the sanctuary. I can tell you what I was wearing. It was that real to me. I knew two things, when, and which is crazy to say this, what I'm gonna say, but it was two things I knew. Number one, I knew I would do three years of Bible college. I didn't know why. There was no reason. There was really, and nobody even told me that you had to do three years. But I knew that my destiny was obviously intertwined with this ministry. And uh, so the second thing I knew was I knew that I would work for this ministry, which is very weird because there was no indication. I didn't know Pastor Rodney personally, but I just knew in my spirit that that's what God would do. But the three years that I was here were the greatest three years of my life from the time I was born again, really to that time, because God did something in me in three years that he had not been able to do since I was 17 years old. By the end of my third year of Bible college, um, on a Sunday, Pastor Rodney called my wife and I up and asked us if we would come up to the green room to his office actually to talk to him. And we walked in and we were sitting in the, the, the room and it was my wife and myself and Pastors Rodney and Adonica, it was just the four of us. And he, you know, and he just looked at Kristen and I and he said, look, we need people that are willing to shepherd our people and to pastor. And we just wondered if you'd be willing to, to pastor. And that was in 2007. And, um, and, and, it, we've, and now here, we're still youth pastors. And so the fruit of it is, is uh, the unique opportunity now since then to literally see thousands about, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands of young people that have come in over the years and many touched by the power and the fire of God because we felt that God would give us the same message he gave pastors Rodney and Adonica. He'd give us the same message uh, to give to young people. So I can say that what God has done for me here at RBI, just as the, the motto of RBI is raising up a new breed of revivalists for the 21st century, that God has literally given us that opportunity to travel. And, uh, and now, and I could go on and on, and thousands of now since 2011, over 50,000 teenagers and young adults saved just in Tampa, Florida alone because of the mandate for souls that Pastor Rodney has received from the Lord and we have received also as being a part of this ministry. RBI is unlike any college or Bible college. I've been to a lot of them. This is literally a place that is actually doing what Pastor says. He is raising up a, a, a breed of revivalists. These are not people that are your average Christians. These are people that are gonna make a difference. And, and I believe that with all my heart because we see the fruit not only in my life, but in many that are around the world. I firmly believe that, 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 that God is using this place to fulfill the end time harvest and bring in the harvest of souls. And so I would believe that if anybody that is watching this is even contemplating saying, God, use me. I believe that this is a place, a launching pad that God is using. And I firmly believe that their future begins right here. The World Health Organization is part of the United Nations system. Dr. Fauci. Dr. Anthony Fauci. We know we need broad scale testing and the ability for contact tracing. If anything kills over 10 million people, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus.
called us to be the light and to be the salt. And the only thing we could take with us when we leave this earth is people. So many people pass me by. There are many without a smile on their face. Now I see pain, I see fear, I see confusion in their eyes And their happiness is all faded away But there's someone who can heal the broken hearted And in his love there's peace evermore But how will they go? playing games. The time is running out. The last few grains of sand are in the hourglass. We still have a job to do. There's millions of people that have never heard the gospel. The ark is filled and the gangplank is down. He is waiting to see who else will come in. The body of Christ, of every tribe and tongue. He said, occupy till I come. A glorious church without spot or blemish. Full of the fire, full of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. But there's one hour left. 
One more hour of daylight, and then the sun will set forever on the horizon of time. The Lord said to me, as I was standing on the platform in Umlazi, He said, what do you see here? Tell the people in America, with the platform set up just like the foreign crusades, with the rows of lights, tens upon tens of thousands of people, like a Holy Ghost Woodstock. This is going to come in America. And when it happens, whole cities are going to shake under the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, welcome. I guess we're live. I have no pictures on screen, guys. I have nothing, and this is live from the River Tampa Bay Church. So I'm just uh, uh, want to greet everybody. Yeah, but I can't see the thing. So can they fix it up, please? I have three hours of broadcasting here tonight. Like to do it properly. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome to this awesome program tonight. Pray that you guys are not half asleep eating turkey and the leftovers, I'm happy to report to you, I have had no turkey at all. I stayed away from it. I ate venison, which I had a great time actually ministering to a couple of deer this week and then actually got the, 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 the fun part of cooking one of the legs myself and then got into competition with the other people to see what they could produce and, um, and they did a good job, but I still stayed with what I cooked <laughs> anyway, happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and this is going to be awesome tonight. Here we are, night 168 of the stand, and everybody wants to know how long this is going for, and, you know, people think because we advertise on the website that we close like the end, end of November. We're not. We're going in the whole of December now, obviously, uh, so starting, you know, this whole week we'll be live and the following week, but there are one or two weeks that we're going to be renovating the field. There's some amazing, amazing things that are happening. This program is three hours long, so we're going to have music. We've got, there's going to be humor. I'm going to be sharing from the word. And then there's going to be kind of like a news closeout, you know, for probably the last hour. We'll even take some questions and answers if, if you have any questions. And I'll try to give the answer. If I know it, I'll tell you. If I don't know it, I guess I should have got the camera, huh? I'm staring over here to the two back cameras over there. I better look at you. <laughs> People wonder if I'm squint or something, yeah? All right, so um, please let everybody know that, uh, that uh, they can tune in right now. This is live, 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 live right now. And if you don't mind clicking, uh, yeah, it, I'm live on my, my YouTube. If you can click the like button because it pushes it up on all the viewership. And then what I want to push for tonight too, we at 98,700 subscribers. Wouldn't it be great if tonight in the next three hours that we hit the 100,000 mark? That would be like just epic. I mean, phenomenal. So uh, if you can click the like button and then do me a favor, click the subscribe button, and then click the little bell so you can be notified every time that we do go live. And I apologize for the first few minutes. I was looking at the two back cameras there, and I was actually looking at them, but I was talking to you. But now I'm looking at you and talking to you, so I'm, I'm here. We have no floor managers. No one tell me what camera to look at. We kind of do things just kind of differently. This is probably the most unorganized television broadcast place you'll ever meet in your life. We kind of just wing it. We fly it by the seat of our pants. Um, 
to actually let you know that I actually sat down here with like two minutes to live. You know, I came, came in here. But all right, we ready to go with this, so it's, it's, it's going to be awesome. So let me open in prayer. Please click the like button and click the, uh, click the subscribe button and the bell, and then notify on all your social media, uh, Facebook, Facebook Live, your YouTube, whatever you watch. If you're watching on Twitchy or uh, whatever, just tell everybody to tune in right now, and um, it's going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, let me pray, and then we're going to have Violetta. She's all the way from... Nicaragua, and uh, really I met this young lady because of evangelist Ankit Rambabu. He was having a crusade out in Los Angeles, and he got there, and apparently the music was so bad, he told me, Pastor, I could have done better with a pig on my arm squeezing the thing's neck. And uh, he looked at Violetta and he said, sing. And he gave her the song that Octavia wrote called Suddenly. And she knocked it out of the park. Well, I didn't know any, I never heard her sing. Her and her brother are here. Their, their parents passed a mega church in Nicaragua. And um, so Monday night at the stand last week, she showed up. Was it this week? Yeah. This week she showed up. And I just called on the platform and said, sing. And I tell you, she so blessed us. I just wept. It was, it was awesome. And she's anointed. And uh, they fly back to uh, Nicaragua on Sunday. It's a bit great to meet her and her brother Israel. So why don't you let her open right now with suddenly and she's going to knock it out of the park. And while we're doing that, just notify everybody, tune in live. This is live. This is live right now. This is it. Live. Give Violetta a welcome. Suddenly. And the music begins to play. He needs what? Ten seconds. A second. on a golf cart they're riding across the parking lot right now to press the button they're gone they have three hours not like we're on national television or anything <laughs> this is like hilarious <laughs> okay, well, <clears throat> while they are driving across the 90-acre parking lot and to press the button, um, I'll just keep talking until the, the floor manager, yeah, if we do have one, if not, you can send him by golf cart as well to come and instruct me how long it's going to take for you to press the play button for the music video. Nothing on the floor, nothing through the mic, can't hear anybody. What's happening, my friend? He had it. He lost it. He lost it. How do you lose it? Do you put it in pocket? Folks, this is live. We on national television. We actually around the world on TV right now, across India. If you're watching in India, we love you. It's already Saturday morning. We watch, watch it across the UK, Africa, and across the United States. Great. Um, it's a wonder that we even have a ministry. Has he found it yet? He's working on it. This is great. Like a mighty rushing wind came a roar from heaven. Why don't we just go to it? Just sing a cappella until they get it ready. And then can start rolling the music anytime when he finds it. If, she doesn't, if he doesn't get it by the end of the song, she'll just do it a cappella. We'll pr we pretend like we're back in Africa. We have no music. Just go ahead and sing. Bless us. Violetta, we're glad to have you with us tonight. We thank you, Holy Spirit. If you're in your home, wherever you are, 
just lift your hands and just start praying, giving thanks to the Lord for everything that he has done. He is honored today. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. And today, Holy Spirit, we want to honor you with our lives, with our actions, with everything we do. You're welcome, Holy Spirit. You're welcome in this place. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to sing. With an open heart, ready to receive, I yield to thee. I press in with expectancy, a touch from thee. And like a mighty rushing wind came a roar from heaven. Holy Spirit came and filled me suddenly. And oh, suddenly. And suddenly. Oh, suddenly, with an open heart, ready to receive, I yield to thee, your glory, your glory, Lord, rising like a wave, I close my eyes and I lift my hands and like a mighty rushing wind came a roar from heaven Holy Spirit came and filled me suddenly and like an overflowing power came an all-consuming fire. Holy Spirit came and filled me suddenly. And oh, suddenly. And suddenly. And oh, suddenly, the peace of God fills my soul, and breakthroughs and miracles, and I am healed, I am whole, and I am filled with His joy, and all pain and fear is gone. I'm overwhelmed by his love, and suddenly I understand, and who you are and who I am, and suddenly, oh, suddenly, and suddenly. place Jesus you are a sudden wind your fires in this place Jesus we welcome you Jesus come on so powerful that was so great she didn't need anything you know we in Africa we learned to sing without music and she's from Nicaragua we we just just kind of wing it, you know. Great job, young lady. Amazing. I mean, do you have something you want to sing in uh, Spanish? Just sing a worship song right now. Give them a little bit more time. You know, the golf cart broke down at the edge of the field, and they're trying to get it fixed before they can get to the control room. You know what I mean? That's a joke. <laughs> 
Just go ahead and bless us with this Spanish song. Yeah. Well, there's this song in Spanish that it, said, that it says, your love is sweeter than honey. And today, I just want people to feel the love that God has for you. Jesus loves you. And I pray today that that love, that anointing comes over you wherever you are. Tu amor por mí es más dulce que la miel y tu misericordia es nueva cada día. Tu amor por mí es más dulce que la miel y tu misericordia es nueva cada día y es por eso que te alabo y es por eso que te sirvo y es por eso que te doy todo mi amor y es por eso que te alabo y es por eso que te sirvo y es por eso que te doy todo mi amor y tu amor por mí es más dulce que la miel y tu misericordia es y nueva cada día y tu amor por mí es más dulce que la miel y tu misericordia es y nueva cada día y es por eso que te alabo y es por eso que te sirvo y es por eso que te doy todo mi amor y es por eso que te alabo y es por eso que te sirvo y es por eso que te doy todo mi amor. Come on, just give the Lord praise. Lift your hands right where you're on. Just begin to thank Him right now. Just begin to praise Him right now. Father, we just thank you for your presence. For all these nights that you've helped us and you've graced us as we make this stand for our brothers and sisters that cannot stand, we meet, we rejoice, we celebrate your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your kindness to us. And Father, we just give you praise. Thank you. Even yesterday as we were able to gather as families and worship you and thank you and fellowship and thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the state of Florida. Thank you for our governor. Thank you, Lord, that all the restrictions have been lifted by him and we on the freest state in the union. I pray for our brothers and sisters in other parts of America that are bound. Tonight, they live under communist control. And Lord, even the plan that the enemy has for the future of our nation, I pray that it is stopped. It is, it is thwarted. It is brought to naught. Expose every plan of the wicked and let it come to nothing. And we thank you for it and we give you praise. We give you honor and glory for you alone are worthy to receive all glory and all honor and all praise because there's no one like you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. All right, well, um, I'm waiting on anybody can tell me if they have found tracks or not, but I'm going to have Alma come, and she's going to bless us, and Alma just follow the Holy Ghost here tonight. Um, if they don't have tracks, I know you can. she got a track. They have one. What a miracle. A miracle. They have a track, Alma. It's amazing. 
Um, Alma Rivera is from Long Island, New York. Her and her husband have been with us now three weeks. They're going back next week. They'll be going back to their state. But God's really been using them in, a, in an awesome way. She's ministered at the stand. Some of the nights did a big night of praise and worship. And then also preached, gave a testimony. She's from Mexico City. So won't you just open your heart to receive right now as she ministers, as they have the track, and they'll roll that in five, four, three, two, one. I really believe that God is about to touch you, uh, and we believe that he is a great God, and he has wonderful plans for your life. When I call you, you get me the strength I Nothing is impossible for you Your greater life, your faithfulness Has been the roof of her True and constant, I promise you always keep. Nothing is impossible for you because he is faithful. He is a great God. Our God is great, not because he is too big. Our God is great, because nothing is more for him. Our God is great. Our God is good. Come on, and say it with me. Our God is great. Our God is great, yeah. not because he is No, our God is great, because nothing is too small for him. Our God is great.
Gregor. Wonderful, wonderful. Do, do another one. Just flow with the Holy Ghost here. Uh, Amen. Roll the next one. <laughs> you know, every time that you call upon the name of the Lord, He is right there with you. He says, call unto me and I will answer and I will, I, I, will, I will be right there with you. I'm paraphrasing. I will be right there with you, taking care of you. So when you call the name of the Lord, He's going to answer you. Whatever you need, whatever you are facing tonight.
That's so powerful, powerful. That's uh, music by Alma and her website. We post everything on all the streams. Um, this is coming to you live from the River Tampa Bay Church, um, our studio right here on the platform. This is going to be an epic night of uh, a lot of things happening. I got clips and uh, there's going to be some, some humor. And, but I'm a, I want to minister right now. Let's just do this. If you're watching on YouTube channel, if you do me a favor, just click the like uh, button on YouTube because it pushes it up in all the viewing. So it shows up when, when people look and, and they see live, it'll show up as one of the top viewing that helps us, especially in the time of censorship. If you can click like for us quickly and then also just go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We, we're sitting at about 98,700 and um, you can help us hit 100,000 subscribers tonight. Wouldn't that be great if we did that? Tonight, that would be just great. So just quickly, just hit the like button and then hit subscribe and press the little bell so you can be notified when we go live. Um, before I get into the word here, um, I want to do something else. You know, uh, people have been asking me about the stand. So many people tune in. I had somebody actually message me today. They said, um, so, um, you know, I watched the stand and I like what you're doing. I said, what are we doing? So he said, well, you're doing revival every night. I said, no, that's not what we're doing. And he, he actually had no clue what we were actually doing. That we were just, because then he went and said to me, he said, well, so you're not allowed to meet inside your building. I said, no, we're allowed to meet in our building. We, we three days after, my, or really the day after my arrest, we could have gone back in the building. We were totally free. We, can, we meet inside our sanctuary. So all of our conferences, we do them actually inside our building, two meetings a day. But there's a reason why we are doing the stand on the field, because a lot of people are not allowed to meet. And you can see already now major draconian measures being implemented in places across even America and in other parts of the world where they're not even allowed to meet. They're not allowed to sing. They're not allowed to do anything. And I'll be discussing some of this in the last hour of the program today. But on our website, the stand20.com, the stand20.com, uh, we put the manifesto there. So I wanted to just go through the manifesto so you understand why are we doing this. It's not because we've got nothing else to do. It's not because we're trying to keep the ministry doors open. It's not because if we don't do it, the ministry is going to go down the tubes. We're going to fail. God has really blessed our ministry. And we've been able to, you know, coming up January the 1st, to be 41 years for me, 85 countries of the world. So God has extremely blessed us. But the Lord spoke to me that we were to do the stand and we were to run it every night. Of course, we, the, the frequency in December will be less. And there's some major things that's going to happen here in December anyway. But obviously, we're trying to give people a break and we rotate the staff and we've got hundreds and hundreds, up to 600 volunteers. People share and uh, they're on and off and people come and go. You know, it's, this place is like a beehive here. Um, but let me run through the manifesto that we put on the stand20.com. You can pull it up. And you can see for yourself why we're doing that. It's a strong manifesto, just so you know. This does not come from a skinny jeans, soy latte drinking pastor with a, hand, with a, with a merce bigger than my wife's handbag. <laughs> we, we, we don't drink soy here. No, no soy allowed. But let me read this here before, you know, I want you to grab this. So this is the manifesto. In case you don't know what's going on and why we're doing this. The manifesto says, the Antichrist system operating through the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, the UN, the United Nations, and governments worldwide have mocked the church and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, there's a lot of people in ministry today, they don't believe that that's actually what's happened, but that's actually what's happened. And I called it from day one that this was an attack on the gospel and on the church. You say, what do you mean? The fact that churches can't meet today, but they're having Black Friday sales where people can line up to get into Walmart and all the other stores. Please, don't even argue with me because you have no clue what's actually going on. And it, all it does is just show how you've been dumbed down by the mainstream media and by the education system, by the universities, by the school system, and even by the churches. Unfortunately, pastors that are totally oblivious to what's actually going on, they have no clue. They're like a 
Canadian goose lost in a thunderstorm. They, they don't know what's going on. And you might shut your church down and not even open up till the spring. I've got news for you. When you do finally open up, you won't have anybody because the people, the sheep are being scattered even as we speak. So they've done this by arbitrarily shutting down the church, by not acknowledging or recognizing the church as an essential service, by openly discriminating against and even persecuting the church. In their arrogance, you know, look, at, look at Cuomo. In their arrogance, what, what's the other guy, your mayor in, in New York? Huh? De Blasio. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Is he still the mayor? Who's the mayor of New York? Bill? He's still... Okay, well, it shows you. I mean, I don't live in New York. I live in free Tampa. But, I mean, these guys just want to shut the church down. They're shutting down synagogues. They're shutting down everything. But it's okay to go for a Black Friday sale and go pick up some cheap junk made in China, you know, and save yourself $50. People, they whacked out of the tree. I, I, obviously, there's more people on crack in America than it's not on crack. No wonder they want to legalize it so everybody can just stay goofed down to their heads. Anyway, so they've attempted to neutralize the word of God and the power of God and to mute the voice of the church. You can see that happening right now with censorship that's taking place. And while all the pastors want to just stay live on Facebook, on Zoom, <laughs> they will just cut your Zoom feed. They'll just cut your, fee your Facebook page. You won't even have a voice to all these people giving up their churches, their physical church, and actually going online. You actually, you're destroying the whole ministry. Ministry is about people. Ministry is about touching people. Ministry is about seeing people. Ministry is not just about staring through the lens of a camera. This is a 21st century um, luxury that we can reach more people this way. But it's not a substitute for actually meeting with people and seeing them eyeball to eyeball. That's how it is. So they want to mute the voice of the church, the voice of righteousness and truth. They ignore or belittle the teachings of Jesus Christ. They mock the word of Almighty God, the blood of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of our worship, which in some places you're not even allowed to sing now. You can't sing because you'll spread the virus. Psalm 91 the saving and keeping power and the preserving power of God, the power of communion, where you're not even allowed to have communion in some places, the table of the Lord, the body and the blood of Jesus, the doctrine of laying on our hands, the commandment to gather together, the power of unity and prayer of agreement. So what we're doing with the stand 20, like Elijah, we mock the prophets of Baal. And you can see that every time we open the service and we sing and we lay hands on people and we minister and we, we do everything that they tell us that we're not allowed to do. We are mocking the prophets of Baal. And uh, I do that every day on Twitter. If you want to follow me, R. Howard Brown on Twitter, that's my place for mocking the prophets of Baal. And uh, I don't really use it on Instagram. Uh, you know, basically on Instagram, I just post personal pictures or ministry pictures and leave it. What I do, the little I do post, you get crazies that fly by and then you rebuke them. But most of the time you just have to block and delete. But uh, on Twitter, that's where I really mock them every day and have fun doing it. Really. It's actually a hobby of mine. So we mock the mainstream media. We mock those who oppose and resist almighty God. They will fail and, uh, and fall Every one of them, we stand for the word of God and for the billions around the world whose rights to worship freely have been removed. And, and, and they're not allowed. And, and some of them will never be able to worship again. And won't, they'll never have their rights restored to them. Because one thing you'll learn about government, that if you give them an inch, they'll take a foot. If you give them a foot, they'll take a, a meter, a yard, or a mile. And they'll just never give it back because it goes to their head. So we stand for the hundreds of millions who now are dying of starvation because of the ill-advised, unwarranted lockdown. There is a virus, as there have been in the past. However, there is no justification for the draconian steps taken by governments to keep us safe, which, as it turns out, were contrary to the advice of scientists and experts in the field of pandemics and immunology, 
the percentage of deaths has been low compared to the recovery rate and even lower compared to the number of people who are and will be adversely affected for years to come as a direct result of the loss of jobs, businesses, destruction of the economies, the loss of their personal freedoms. Many more people are at risk of dying or have already died because they have been denied medical care for other ailments, comorbidities. So people are dying of cancer because they couldn't get treatment, diabetes, and every other thing imaginable. Our stand on this field represents the dream of billions of people worldwide. We stand to see all nations of the earth open back up with no blackmail of the citizenry through forced participation in tracking apps, mandatory vaccines, which let me tell you, that's what they're planning. That's what's coming next. So the mandatory mask was just there to get you into compliance so that you will line up for the vaccine. But according to them, basically, masks will be here for the next, only the Lord knows how long. And you were never meant to wear a mask. You have what's called an immune system. And your immune system, if it's strong, will resist any virus that comes along. Of course, this one's been altered and played with and doctored and has actually been weaponized. So the people, the threat of permanent loss of their freedoms and rights. Governments serve people. People are not obligated to serve the government. Our rights are given to us by Almighty God. We are not slaves. We are free people. We stand to see the restoration of people's liberties, to live and to die at our own risk. We stand and worship according to Psalm 150 with voices, singing and musical instruments, wind instruments, string instruments, percussion instruments. We will stand and obey the Great Commission. We'll stand and preach the gospel and the truth of the word of God. We will lay hands on the sick and cast out demons. We will stand and baptize converts and dedicate babies. And so then it says, stand with us and may this field, this stand be duplicated through God's people in all 50 states and every U.S. territory and every country of the world. And there's a sign and called the Stand 20. That's on the website called the Stand20.com. I encourage you, if you've never been to that website, please go there and pull it up so then you can educate people. You can find out exactly what we're doing and why we are doing this, because I believe it's very, very important. And many people have been encouraged I get messages all the time, and people are sending us, they, they, they're sending us pictures. They've taken the logo of the stand, and they've put it up, and the stands from across Africa, even across Europe, and other parts of the world. So it, it's amazing. People say, can I use the stand logo? I said, yeah, as long as you stand and worship God and, and lay hands on the sick and cast out devils, of course you can. You, you're welcome to. So... This is not just about something that, you know, we own. It's a movement of people that are making a stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and we've got to do that. We, we have to do that. We are called to preach the gospel. And uh, I know these people say, yeah, but pastor, if you're called to preach the gospel, how come then are you addressing political things? Because our people live in the world, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they're confronted by all of this wickedness going on. As a pastor, not only must I give instruction from the word of God, but I need to tell them exactly what they need to do, not to survive, but so that they can take territory and they can do exactly what God's called them to do. Many people said, I gave up hope. I had no faith. I was about to quit and people are being fired up and they don't realize that this is actually your finest hour. Even for you that are in business, people that are in business, people that are in ministry, this is your greatest hour. This, this, this will go down in the history books for our ministry as the greatest year in the history of our ministry in every way, in reach, in the harvest of souls, in the provision, in every single way. This, there's no other year that can compare with 2020. As horrendous as what it's been in the natural, as, 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 as uh, you know, just to watch crazy stuff happening on a daily basis, like, it's like 20 years of events have happened in, in, in 2020. It's like, <laughs> you can't, it's like every day you turn on the news and you watch something more bizarre that you actually think should belong to the onion or uh, the Babylon Bee, you know, any pa you know, parody site. But unfortunately, it's the truth. That's what's taking place. So we're not afraid. I'm not afraid. That's why I would not close the church because we, as you know, we've done everything in the natural to secure with machines in the place that kill every virus. And now we've even gone to extra links. Now the whole field, we've sprayed it down. We have special stuff that kills every virus for 90 days. We spray all the handles of the door, doors of the toilets. I mean... 
<laughs> if there's no chance anybody's going to get a virus here, you may get at the gas station, at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, the Uber Eats guy that brings stuff to you, you'll get, but you will not get it here at the river. It's impossible, impossible to get it here. It's impossible to catch any virus here. We kill every virus on the property, spiritually and physically. We have all the, we have all the, the medical, the, the stuff that everybody is trying to scramble. The NFL, the NBA have all signed contracts with this company to fumigate and spray their own stadiums and stuff. So we, we're ahead of the curve. We got all the stuff. We got the stuff for your house. We got the stuff for anything, for your car and whatever. And, you know, so I'm sure there's people coming around trying to get people infected or whatever, but it, it, it's not going to work. There are going to be people that get sick. People are going to have the flu. But as you can see, the numbers, <laughs> basically, if you, if you measure the flu numbers and the numbers of COVID, it's, it's actually lower now. It's actually lower. The, the deaths are lower this year than they were last year of the flu. So obviously the flu and COVID have unified now either that or president trump has totally he's he's masterfully destroyed flu flu has disappeared in the age of trump amazing just phenomenal so you know people comment oh you know take COVID seriously we please folks <laughs> at least arm yourself with some facts before you even talk and stop talking the lines of cnn and MSNBC and ABC and, and all of the mainstream prostitute propaganda operation mockingbird media, the puppet muppet heads that sit every day and pump garbage. It's like having a sewer pipe connected to your house. And all you do is you, you just fill yourself with sewage. Basically, that's what's going on. You have to take God's word and get his plan and purpose. And of course, Adonic and I come from Africa. We, we travel through the villages and everywhere we go, we pray for people and they have every kind of virus known to man from Ebola to you name the virus. They have, a, they have it in Africa. I was just talking to a missionary yesterday and he said they, they based out of Zambia. He said, we cannot find COVID everywhere, anywhere in Zambia. We can't find it. It's not there. We, he said, I've gone into stores, I've gone into shops, I've gone into to, to pharmacies in Zambia and said, are you selling any, uh, any uh, medication to treat people? They said, no. Are you selling anything for the flu? No, it's not even there. And their markets are there, the buses are loaded, the people are traveling, whatever. He said, we can't find it. We just can't find it. So obviously this uh, thing has been weaponized and they focused on certain areas and of course this year has been used in the great deception to basically stop people from voting and so that they can mail out you know 100 million ballots to people's homes and uh, and they could swing a whole election but all that's going to fail as well which i'll explain to you in the final hour of the program we have tonight please if you just tuning in with us please if you can let all your friends family to know to tune in this is live on this friday night uh, the day right after Thanksgiving. I know, I'm not sure if people, this is the 27th day of November. I'm not sure if people are out still doing their Black Friday shopping, which I wouldn't even want to know why you would even want to do that at this juncture. But, you know, that becomes a family tradition where people are going out. Um, those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you can click like on the program, if you're just tuning in with us, and then also subscribe on Rodney and Brown YouTube, and then hit the button we wanted to try to we want to believe that we can get to a hundred thousand subscribers on our youtube channel which is very important if you can do that quickly now um i want to uh i want to take the word here for a moment and go into if you will take your bibles and go with me to the book of deuteronomy book of deuteronomy and this is such a powerful passage of scripture how many of you watching tonight as we come here to the closeout of November, are believing God for provision. If you can, just let me know in the comments here on the YouTube channel, just say me, 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 me. Yeah, on the Facebook, if you can just, I do not have a way of following that. Unfortunately, normally sometimes we've had a screen where I can see comments, but we don't have that tonight for whatever reason. I'm just glad that we have a uh, sound right now. Um, but if you can just let me know what's uh, in, okay, a lot of people, yeah, me, me, me. So I can see it on, on our, somebody said they, they, 
paid off their home. That's phenomenal. Okay, so there's a lot of people watching right now believing God for provision. So I'm going to share something with you that I believe is going to bless you here tonight. And this passage in Deuteronomy 28 means so much to me. And the reason it means so much to me because this passage basically overwhelmed me in my life. And I can remember being so overwhelmed by the blessing of God that I got up here at the church on this very platform and I actually apologized to our church. This is back in 2003. And I said to the church, church, I want you to forgive me as your pastor, please. And now everybody's looking at me, you know, what, what's he going to say now? And I said, I have taught you on the blessing of God over the years, but I have to tell you now that I have underst I've understated it. Please forgive me that I don't have the ability in the English language to explain to you how, how great how great, how awesome that he is, because I've tried to tell you, but I did not have the verbiage. I did not have the words to explain to you how great he is and how much he wants to bless you. And I want you to grab this tonight. I want you to grab a hold of this tonight like you've never grabbed it before and understand what I'm telling you here. Please listen to me. The passage of scripture I'm going to read to you was written way before even the foundation of America, way before the foundation of any Federal Reserve and any government. And um, this is God's word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. And what you have to understand is God watches over his word to perform it. So this came at a time in our life, six weeks after my daughter died, where God blessed us in a profound way, which I won't go into detail. One of these days, I'll take a whole service and I'll explain to you all of that. We actually have it in a series called All These Blessings, which if you go to revival.com, our store, it's on there and you can get it. But I will remember that I stood and I wept my way through Deuteronomy 28. I couldn't even read the scripture. I wept my way through each verse because I realized how awesome that he was and how great and mighty that he is. And for every person that's watching me right now that you're worried about the future, you're worried about the end of the month, you're worried about December, you're worried about Christmas, you're worried about just everything. How am I gonna make it? How am I gonna pay bills? How do I buy Christmas gifts for the, for the kids or whatever? I want you to listen to me carefully. I want you to grab this word. I feel the anointing so strong right now and the power of God coming into your home right now. If you will grab this, there's a mother watching me. There's a single mom watching me right now. This word's for you. There's a father who's gone through great upheaval. You're actually a single parent and you don't even know how you're going to take care of your children. Listen to what the word of the Lord says here today. There's a senior couple that's watching me and you've, you've like limited on what comes in, but God's going to supernaturally undertake in your life. I want you to grab a hold of this. This is not me just here trying to give some nice words here. This is not my word. I did not write this. I have nothing to do with writing this. This is God's word and it's for you. And God watches over his word to perform it. The Bible even tells us that God's word is actively alive and energetic. It lives. It lives. It's living. It's alive. And it's moving and it will move into your life today. One word from God transforms forms everything. And even tonight, let me tell you what I feel is going to happen here tonight. Poverty will be broken off you. The mindset of poverty has got nothing to do with how much money you have in, in the bank. The mindset where you're worried about lack and you're worried about the future and you're worried about how you're going to make it will go off of you today. Tonight you will sleep peacefully. You'll wake up tomorrow morning knowing with a peace in your heart that God will take care of you and that he'll make a way where there is no way that he will furnish a table in the wilderness, that he will make the crooked paths straight. God can even cause the remaining days of this month to catch up on everything that this month has lacked. So let me read this to you. This is dangerous now. <laughs> this is very dangerous. What I'm about to read to you is very dangerous. It's a dangerous against the plan of the enemy against your life. There's a young couple that's watching me here and you want to get married, but you don't have any money and you were, you know, you've said, well, we'll wait until we get the money. Don't wait for the money. You can't get enough money to get married. 
Just purpose in your heart. We're going to make a decision and follow the Lord. Listen, Jesus comes to weddings. He loves weddings. Not only does he love weddings, he turns water into wine. So that's one thing I can guarantee you. Jesus will get in, in the middle of your, your wedding and provide everything for you. And I can take a whole program and just talk about that. Miracles will be seen from rings, everything that people needed to the wedding, to the food, to the honeymoon, to every single thing. So I'm speaking to a couple right now that's watching and you say, I don't know how we're going to, I'm going to wait till I get so much money in the bank. Stop it. Stop it right now. You don't have enough money to marry her. Trust me, I didn't have enough money to marry my wife, but I had faith. I met her when I was 19, she was 18. I had no money. She had a car, I had a suitcase. And that's it. When I bought her the ring, it was a ring with the tiniest diamond. I actually felt embarrassed, but she was so happy. She was so happy to get this ring. And uh, it was a real diamond because I thought if I get, maybe I'll just get a cubic. But a cubic's fake. So I said, no, okay, I'll just buy this diamond and I bought this, this ring. And, you know, I've been able to replace it several times and, and knocked it out of the park now. You know, over 39 years, you have a lot of time to do that. But so it's not about all that stuff. It's about grabbing a hold of the word of God. God will come into your life. You know, it's like people say, well, we can't have kids. We don't have enough money. I've got news for you. You don't have any money to have kids. <laughs> Just have children. Stop. Sort of the calculator. Oh, I'll tell you, we'll deceive. We can make the, our business go and then we'll have a child. Well, we've had one, but we don't want to have another one because it might be too expensive. If you have one, you might as well have two. And if you have two, go ahead and have three. Now, I can't say go ahead and have four because we only had three. So, but really, in reality, I would have loved to have had four, maybe five, maybe even six. But I'm very happy now that I've got six grandchildren, but probably should have. I know Adonik is watching right now, baby. I just didn't want to put you through it again. <laughs> but uh, we are having fun with the grandchildren. But let me just tell you, one child, two child, three child, more. Four child, five child, six child. No, I know some, you'll always get people saying, oh, buy a television. Buy a television. Don't buy a television. Just have children and enjoy your life and do exactly what God tells you to do. And God will make a way for, for you. Now, I do know some people that have had 12 children. Uh, I don't know if you should go that far, but, you know, I do salute any woman that's given birth to 12 children. I think it's pretty amazing, personally. Huh. Anyway, it makes me tired just thinking of it. As a husband, I don't know how I would survive 12 pregnancies. You know why? Because every time my wife got pregnant, I put on 25 pounds. And then she lost the weight by breastfeeding, and I kept the weight. So if we'd have had like 10 children, I'd have had to be on that, what's that program where they lose all their weight? <laughs> you know, huh? Where the guy's like weighs a ton, you know what I mean? Huh? Yeah? Huh? The what? The biggest deal. I'd have had to be on that thing. Because, I mean, 25 pounds with every child, that's a lot of weight. Somebody said, what do you mean? When she had the child, you put on the weight. Because she would order hamburger, eat half of it and the fries and then give it to me. And then I'm in Africa and we were taught to eat everything that's put in front of you because there's starving children in America. <laughs> and the starving children in India and the starving children wherever. So we ate everything. We cleaned the plate. And we were just told, do not waste food. Anyway, that's another subject. Okay. Have you found Deuteronomy? Have you found Deuteronomy? Okay. And I'm reading, I've got the King James Amplified combination, you know, split down the middle. I'm going to read to you from the Amplified version of the Bible. So if it comes across a little loud, it's because it is amplified. And I pray that this be a great blessing to you today. Amen. All right. I'm going to start reading here now. This, this is overwhelming. So he says here, if you listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, 
being watchful to do all his commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Now, we know that he was talking to Israel. And I'm not here yeah, a replacement theologian, you know, that we've replaced Israel. All the kind of, I believe in the nation of Israel, but we are of the seed of Abraham and we are God's children. And whatever was promised to them is promised to us. Because remember, they rejected him. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 12, he came to his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God. So we are children of the Most High God. As you know, Galatians 3, 13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For he's written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. And then verse 29 says, And if he be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So I'm of the seed of Abraham. Therefore, whatever he promised to Israel is mine. It's mine. Every promise in the book is mine. I'm not going to sit here and tear that out. No, no, that's not for us today. If you want that, then you'll, just, you'll end up with a Bible, a holy Bible, full of holes. Everything that you that's not for today, that's not for today. And you'll have a Bible full of holes. Your Bible will look like Swiss cheese, full of holes. And your brain will be like Swiss cheese, full of holes. And your spirit will be like Swiss cheese, full of holes. So come on, receive the word of the Lord. Now look at verse 2. All these blessings will come on you and overtake you. How many want to be overtaken by the blessing of the Lord? Now, to be overtaken by the blessing of the Lord, if you drive down a highway... You overtake things, but if you, if you have a big truck coming, it pulls past you. Some of them here in Florida, they drive like 95 miles an hour and they overtake you. You can feel the wind. You can feel everything as they overtake you. That's what the blessing of God does. The blessing of God is not something you're looking for. You're seeking the kingdom. You're following him and the blessing comes from behind and overtakes you. He says, all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you heed the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Well, we live in Tampa, so we bless in the city. Or the church is in Tampa. And blessed shall you be in the field. I live in a field. I've got like 26 acres in the middle of the forest. So that's the field. So he said, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. Why did you do that right now? Just say this out loud. Say, I'm blessed in the city. Come on, all together now. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. Say it again. One more time. Then he says, "Blessed shall you be." All right, blessed shall you be, blessed shall be the fruit of your body. That means your children, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your beasts. Which that's like a rough word, you know. Somebody said your my, your dog's a real beast. <laughs> you know. So I've had a lot of beasts out at my place. We've, we've had cows and all that kind of stuff, which, which that's scriptural to have cows. That's actually why I got them in the beginning. I, and I, I got rid of my milk cows now, but I want to get a couple of beef cows because I like steak. And especially for all these people that don't want you to eat meat, which I'm a meat eater. I like to eat meat. I eat meat. I come from Africa. Lions eat meat. They don't eat bushes. You never see a lion sitting there chewing on bush. And he's eating grass. They eat meat. And the Bible in, even tells in the last days that people will, there will be seducing spirits, doctrines of devil, where people tell you not to get married and not to eat meat. So anytime they say, don't get married and don't eat meat, you know that's a devil. If I hear people say that, I order me a steak immediately. So the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your beasts. If you don't have beasts, go buy some. They increase your cattle and the young of your flock. So, I mean, we have chickens, we get eggs from them, you know, and we, we have raised turkeys and um, all that kind of stuff. I even had goats at one time, but I got rid of them. Uh, some people eat goat meat. I'm not really, I eat lamb, but goat the, the reason I got rid of the goat because he had big horns and he would try to size you up. And I've seen all the videos on YouTube where the goat comes from behind and hits you in the butt. And I said, no, that ain't happening. I'd shoot him in the head if he did that to me. You know, sheep follow goat's butt. 
you know. Now you can get goat milk. Goat milk. You can make goat cheese. You know, it's not bad. I'm not really a fan of goat milk. But goat cheese, goat cheese is not bad. You know. Anyway. Sorry, if you just tune in here and you don't understand my sense of humor, this is how I entertain myself and it has carried me for 41 years of ministry. It's the reason I'm not in some mental institution in a straitjacket uh, in, a, in a cell just sitting there going, ministry, ministry, ministry. So you have to have a sense of humor. If you don't have one, I'll pray for you before we go off the air tonight that God will actually give you a sense of humor which will carry you a long, long way. And you need to see the funny side of life. Because there is one. All right, next verse, verse 5. Are you there? You still with me? Blessed shall be your basket. Now, you say baskets, really not baskets, it's basket, but anyway. And your kneading trough. That means all you that bake and make bread. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. Say that after me. Say, I'm blessed when I come in, and I'm blessed when I go out. Say it again. That means you're blessed. You're just blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. Wow. How can you be anything but blessed? It's amazing how a lot of people in the church, they want to focus on what the devil's doing. I tell you, the devil's really attacking me. You all need to pray for me. I'm just on the major. I'm not, despi I'm not disputing that there isn't the attack of the enemy. I'm not coming, to, you know, the enemy, the enemy has attacked us in every front. But you have to make a decision who you're going to focus. What kingdom are you focusing on? Are you going to focus on the fact that the enemy is there? Because the Bible even tells us that you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemy. That means right in the middle of our worst enemies, there's a banquet table. So the devil wants to distract you by getting you to focus on your enemies and you don't see the banquet table. The greatest insult that you can give to your enemy is right there when he's railing on you and you just sitting there and eating at the table. That's the greatest insult that you can give your enemy. And the devil hates it when you do this. So you're blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. Say it again. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. Say it one more time. Now, here's verse 7. This is so powerful. This is awesome. Now, it'll show you how God will take care of your enemies. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. That's a lot of ways to run. Seven ways, that means they ran from you in stark terror. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouse, which for you would be your bank account. And in all that you undertake, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his way. All the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name and in the presence of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity for all those people that just hate prosperity. And I can't believe that you would just talk. Uh, look, they say, where do you get that idea from? Some modern preacher? No, I got it from the Bible. Deuteronomy 28 verse 11. The Lord shall make you have a surplus. A surplus. Everybody say surplus. A surplus is an overage. A surplus is more than enough. And it'll come through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, and of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open unto you his good treasure, the heavens, to give rain in the land in its season, and to bless, listen to this, all the work of your hands. That's why everybody should be working. It's very important that you, that you work. There should be no lazy people. That's why to be on government aid or support and just live with being dependent upon the government is slavery, total outright slavery. God will bless the work of your hands. So the Bible also says, whatever your hand finds to do, do with all your might and do it unto the Lord. God didn't intend for you to just sit at home and receive monthly income from the government and they control what you do. 
There's, there's creativity that, wants, that God wants to bring forth from you to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend unto many nations and shall not borrow. That is God's plan for every single one of you watching here. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and shall not be beneath if you heed the commands of the Lord your God, which I command you this day and are watchful to do them. And then he says, do not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right hand of the left to go after other gods and to serve them. So why did he say that? Because Israel had a habit of being, you know, under this curse where the enemy would come in and basically take over everything and then they would cry out to God. God would then come and deliver them, bring them out, prosper them, bless them. And then they, the moment they got blessed, they would forget God and go back into slavery again. And so, and you see that even in the modern church, people come along, they're struggling. God begin to bless them and increase them and multiply them. And then suddenly you don't see them in church anymore. Suddenly now, oh, pastor, the Lord's really blessing our, our business and we bought this boat and now, you know, we're so busy, the business exploded. We're even working six days a week now. We don't even have Saturdays off like we used to. So what we're doing Sundays, we, we decide to take the children to the lake and we go to the beach and all that kind of stuff. And we, we, I know we're not in church, but we're with you in spirit. All of that's total garbage. That's the first sign of going downhill. Years ago, in the first church that we pastored, my wife and I, and I started a church on my 22nd birthday. And there was a couple in the church. They came in. They had no car. They had no job. They had nothing, you know. And we prayed for them. I mean, God prospered them. God blessed them with a car and a house and a job and everything. God, God multiplied them and increased them. And they then came to me and said, Pastor, we've been offered a job in another town, another city. We got given a house with a swimming pool. The kids are so excited. So the first thing I said to them, and what church is there? And they said, no, there's no church. I said, please do not go. If you don't get your children in church, they're going to backslide. They won't serve God. And you guys are not going to be able to be held together. The Lord has really blessed you. God has increased you and multiplied you since you've been in the church. You want, you, you want to put, you want to keep God first place. You want to be accountable and stay around the things of God. Otherwise, it's going to get to you. And you know what? I couldn't talk them out of it. And they left and I heard 18 months later they were divorced. And they lost the house. He lost his job. He became an alcoholic. And, and all of that was unnecessary. So not only did the children of Israel have that problem, but people today have that problem. That's why he said, don't forget, don't forget me. If you go back in Deuteronomy chapter 8, and he says this over here, Deuteronomy 8 and verse 17 he says, and beware, lest you say in your mind and heart, my power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this well. And, and, and that's the first thing people start doing. You know, I'm so great. Look what I've done. I built it this way. And I've heard people say, you know, I'm a self-made man. And, you know, when I was 25, I did this. When I was 27, I did that. When I was 30 years old, I did that. And they don't realize that it's the Lord that graced them, that blessed them to even be able to do any of that stuff. He says, beware lest you say in your mind and heart, my power, the mind, my hands got me this wealth. You shall earnestly remember the Lord your God. It is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant with, as he swore to your fathers as it is to this day. So don't, don't forget God. And, and you don't forget God by putting him first. That means be in church every time the doors open. Now, I know that's hard for many people that are locked down. They don't have a church. Um, tune in to the river every Sunday morning, 930, the main event. If you're anywhere in the central Florida area, you, it's worth the drive. Somebody said, yeah, but I, don't, I can't drive two hours to come to a 90 minute service. Don't worry. We don't have a 90 minute service. We have a three and a half to four hour service and we do it that way. So when you drive two hours, you actually came for something that's worth it because I drive an hour to get to church myself. I wouldn't drive an hour to come to church. that was over an hour. I got better things to do than that. So we make it worth your while. Wow, this is the river buffet, seven course meal for the soul in every way from worship to testimonies to teaching on stewardship, singing, and then the preaching of the word, giving, altar calls. I mean, and then we end with communion. It's like 
we call it the main event because it is the main event. And I want to just say this. If you anywhere, you know, watching me on this Friday night, the 27th day of the month of November, and you can get here Sunday morning, come. Somebody said, you mean inside or outside? I don't know. I make a decision at 7.30 on a Sunday morning. If we're in or out, we decide. I always change it just to shake things up a little bit. Otherwise, people get traditional. And you ain't getting traditional around here. We just ain't, we're not doing that. So come and be a part with us at, at the river. And of course, many of you that watch on CTN, you're watching, uh, you know, our broadcast. And uh, just so you know, the 6th of, of December, which is a very big Sunday for us, is going to be our 24th anniversary as a river church. We started 24 years ago. 24 years ago, we began with 575 people the first Sunday. And we started the Bible school six months later, seven months later. We've graded over 4,000 students that have come through here. Some have spent one, two, three, four years here. Some spent 10 years and they've been launched and they're all over the world now. So it's awesome. We don't keep anybody here. We, we don't put super glue and glue them to the seat. We raise them up. There are some people being with us from the founding but there are people that God calls. And, and, and we, we, our job here is to help people find their assignment and then launch them to the nations of the earth or to America because God sent us here as missionaries to America. Donica and I came as missionaries to America. We're not here for a job. You couldn't pay us to do what we do. We'll do it for free. Uh, we are here on an assignment and God's going to shake America. God's not finished with America. I don't care what the media says. It's not over. You, and I'll be dealing with some stuff here in the last hour of the program, um, just about what's happening here during this election process, which is not over. If you think it is, then you bought in the mainstream media lies. It's not. This thing's going all the way to the Supreme Court. But I don't want to deal with that right now. I, I want to talk about this. The blessing of the Lord. Say this after me. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. And he wants to bless me. He wants to increase me. He wants to multiply me. He wants to make me a blessing. And he wants to use me for his glory. That we, you have to grab a hold of it, that the best days for you are ahead of you, not behind you. We have people watching right now. They came through the Great Depression. Some have lived through, uh, maybe not World War I, or you were born in World War I, but the people lived through World War II. You lived through the Vietnam War, the Korean War. They, they lived through many upheavals or whatever. You lived through the whole problems in the Gulf and many terms in Iran and Iraq and, and, and Afghanistan and whatever, and other places of the world in Sudan. And, and um, uh, so there's people that have been in upheavals, and I understand all of that. But we have to believe that God has put us here for this great final hour which I believe is not yet. The Lord told me the end is not yet. So we have an assignment to do. We've, and, and I shared this back during our minister's conference. And the Lord told me what he would have us do all the way now through to 2029, which I can't get into today, but that's, you know, 10 years. 10 years. So to, to, we're going to live through another, not just this election, but two other elections. And what we do has got nothing to do with who's in the White House or not in the White House or this party or that party. It's all corruption on every front. But it has to do with our assignment of what God's called us. And unless you believe this word that I'm sharing here, you're not going to make it. Because you will allow the media and you allow everything else to dictate to you what you do. So they say, you won't make it, you're not, oh, we're not going to make it. Oh, we need to cut back. We need to, you know, uh, this is the time. This, I believe they're going to be a creation of more. And, and we're doing that here with our Kingdom Business Fellowship, that we believe in God to raise up 300 multimillionaires. I don't know if they're tuning in tonight. If you are, tell me in the comments and just say, yes, Pastor, we're here. We're online tonight. But your assignment, what has God called you to do? The devil's trying to write you off already. Single moms, 
single parents, uh, young people that maybe your family blew up or whatever, you're 18, 90, 20, or you may you have university, you're sitting looking, say, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I have a useless degree. I'm up to marbles and student loan debt or whatever, wh whatever the situation is. Maybe you're in a situation where your church got shut down, not because you, you had no control of it, but you don't even have a church. Well, you can turn in here on Sundays. You can turn in live to the river and... Uh, yeah, they're telling me, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, pastor, we, yeah, we're turning in, we're turning in. People are turning in from all over. So this is so important that you grab a hold of God's word here today and, and basically take it as God speaking to you. you. You know, I might have other ministers look at me and say, you know, your, your faith is so simple. You're just like a child. You believe everything. Yes, thank you. I am. I believe every word. I don't take that as an insult. I'm happy to be like a child and believe every... <laughs> I'm not worried that that offends other people. Well, you, your faith is just so simple. You believe everything that he says. Yeah, I do. I do. And I'll have to get to heaven and he'll have to say to me, you, you over-believe me. You over-trust me. Come on. You think I'm going to get to heaven? And how many times have you heard me say this over the months and years? You think I'm going to get to heaven? The Lord called me aside and said, okay, son, before you enjoy eternity here, let me just tell you, you need to relax a little bit. You kept bragging about me, how great I was and how awesome I was and how big I was. I wasn't that great and I wasn't that big. And you kind of overdid it. You think that's going to happen? Come on, man. He's greater than anything I'm even telling you about. And he loves you. He loves you. And he wants to bless you. He wants to increase you and multiply. So let's pray right now. I want you to just stretch your hand out towards the television where you are viewing from. If you're driving down the road, please do not close your eyes. Keep your eyes on the road. It's very important. Come on, let's pray for some miracles of provision here. Father, in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus, as your word declares, Lord Jesus, you even said, in that day, you'll ask me nothing. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. For the Father himself loves you. And we come right now in that name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. And I pray for multiplication in the life of every man, woman, boy, and girl, regardless of what nation they find themselves in, regardless of what they live under, regardless of the circumstances that are coming against them. I pray for multiplication and increase into the life, and I break every lack in Jesus name let the anointing of God flood their homes flood their life now in Jesus name from the top of your head to the soles of your feet I come against depression I come against fear I come against every bondage of hell every lie of the enemy that tells you that you will not make it that you're going to go under that you will not survive you won't even see the end of November you in December will be your worst month and I flip it on the enemy's head even now you shall croak close out November. It shall be glorious and December shall be the greatest December because of the word of the Lord, not because of me. I'm just telling you what the word of the Lord says. Father, let your word so mightily grows your word and prevails in the life of every man, woman, boy, and girl now under the sound of my voice. Let your anointing shake loose every lie of the enemy. Let fear go right now and let a holy boldness come now just lift your hands and begin to thank him right now just begin to praise him right now in in spite of everything that you're facing just begin to thank him and begin to praise him and just begin to glorify him right now we worship you we glorify you we magnify your name we magnify you we magnify you we magnify your name Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. That even now, creative ideas would come to your people. Even now, when they lie on their bed tonight and go to sleep, when they wake up, they'll know exactly what to do.
Give them solutions to the problems they're facing even now. Give them strategy. Give them, Lord, plan, step one, step two, step three, exactly what you want them to do. I thank you that your angels shall go before them and prosper them in their way of obedience and service. Thank you that you are our shepherd and we will not lack. Thank you that you've set before us a table in the presence of our enemies. And while we sit at the banquet table and we eat and we've, we, we dine for the master has called us and said, come and dine. If we eat of the heavenly bread, if we, if we drink of the living water, as we drink of the new wine, as we have our head anointed with oil and our cup filled to overflowing to the brim, that you make every person that grabs a hold of this with simple childlike faith tonight, that you make them a blessing. Thank you, Lord. If you could do that for Donick and myself, when we had nothing, and you could carry us to 85 countries of the world by your grace, then what will you do with them? That's the presence of God just flooding your life right now. That's the peace of heaven. It's coming upon you right now. There it is. There it is. That's his joy that's just beginning to bubble in your life right now. His peace. Peace, peace. Wonderful peace. Coming down. From the Father above. Just receive that right now. So wonderful. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord. Man, I tell you, I just feel the anointing right now. This reminds me of many nights from the green disc, obviously. This is not green, but I decided instead of doing it in my house tonight that I would come down and just use the studio here. How many would say, Pastor, as, we, as you were praying, we, we receive, we receive it right now, we receive it. Come on, let me know. People watching from South Africa, people that are watching from different countries of the world. I mean, it's obviously late. It's after midnight. It's 2 o'clock in the morning for some of you. Who's receiving? Let me know in the feed. I'm only watching on the YouTube channel feed right now. They're receiving it. People are grabbing a hold of it right now. Supernatural breakthrough on every front. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Blessings. Blessings upon them. Hey, Sydney, God bless you. <laughs> hey, I, I hear the Lord's restoring you, brother, bringing you back to full strength. It's 3.30, 3.28 in South Africa right now. Wow, you guys are pushing the midnight, the midnight hour. People are receiving it there. California is receiving it right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Scotland is receiving it right now. People in different parts of the world that are watching. Tampa, all the way from Tampa. Boy, that's a long way. Man, we pray for you there in Tampa. Oklahoma, where the wind blows, comes sweeping across the plains. Oklahoma, where it's 1.30 in the UK. Oklahoma, where you can have four seasons in a half an hour. Crazy place. It really is. And India. All right. Let's do this right now because I've got an hour and a half left of the broadcast and I want to get into some things that are happening in the nation and some funny stuff we're going to be doing. But let's, uh, Canada, Canada as well. We're praying for you, Canada. Sweden, praying for you. France, we're praying for you. 2.30 2 a.m. in France. Praying for you, Pennsylvania. Yep. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Roanoke, Virginia, praying for you. Texas, Washington State. Praying for you, Ohio. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Texas, good old Texas. Connecticut, praying for you. Mm -hmm. Jamaica, mon, we praying for you. Yeah, tell the devil where to go. Minnesota, we praying for you. Yes. Okay, let's do this right now. Let's give you an opportunity to sow seed and be a part together with us in the stand. 
Why don't you do this? Just ask God, say, God, what can I do to be a part together? There's many things we're doing here, renovations taking place inside. Our sound is all being updated. That's why they're having all the glitches. But we believe these glitches are, are different to the voting machine glitches. And these glitches will be just fixed up here in the next week or so. And everything will be running like a fine oil, oil machine. But why don't you do that right now? Um, if if they can put everything up on the screen on how to give, ask God, say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And sow an offering tonight. Sow your best seed and be a part together with us in, on this Friday night here, right after you know, Thanksgiving. There's, they put up their mail, your gift to P.O. Box 292888 Tampa, Florida 33687. You can take your checkbook out and write a check to the River Church or Revival Ministries International. We also have mobile giving, which you can text Give RMI 77977. You can do that right now. You can give. It'll come right back on your phone. There'll be a drop down box and you can do just that. Uh, put the next way to give up and we'll just keep rotating through this. Or you can invest now. Go to revival.com for online giving. Invest now. There'll be a drop down box and you can sow a seed in that way. I know on, on uh, YouTube, there's Super Chat. Thank you. Evangelist Richard, God bless you, $20. Thank you for sowing a seed on Super Chat. That's a slide that you can sow seed. And on Revival.com, you can give with PayPal. You can give with PayPal. And uh, what other way you got up there? I don't want to forget any other way. Is that it? Cash App. Yeah, dollar sign Revival Ministries. And you can do that. I do a lot of giving by Cash App. And I've been doing that. I really found that a great blessing. And uh, let me see if there's any other ways I don't want to forget. Yeah, because um, I normally get other past, you know, one, some of our other pastors. Okay, so we did the Give Online, uh, Revival.com, online giving, you drop down, you can invest, you can become a monthly partner, uh, invest in the gospel. There's uh, on the YouTube, all the links are there. If you go um, minimize your, your video and you go to the description, all the links are there. You can actually just click on and go straight to the website. You can partner with us to get soul saved. Mobile giving, give RMI 77977. Cash app, dollar sign, Revival Ministries. And then PayPal, give online, revival.com forward slash PayPal. Or you can mail your gift to Revival Ministries, National Appeal Box 292888, Tampa, Florida 33687. Or and make, and make your checks payable to RMI. I just want to thank everybody for your generosity in helping the ministry over all these months and being a part together with us. Uh, if I told you that we own the whole field, we own everything, and um, we've upgraded the broadcast center, as you know, like I said, please don't uh, hold the front of the program against me. You know, I can only do what I do, which is behind the mic. I don't push buttons. And I don't lay the cable. So we'll, we'll find out what the thing is here. I just pray that some of the equipment is not from Dominion Voting Software. <laughs> just praying that, that we didn't, you know, that would just be terrible. But anyway, so <laughs> go ahead and sow a seed right now and be a part together with us. And um, I wonder if you guys back in television can do the blessing, if you could play the blessing as we played it every night, like prophetically, over your giving. And then while they are singing, you can just keep rotating the ways to give. Go ahead now. Let me just challenge everybody once again. Just sow a seed. There are people that have been watching for many, many nights. You've never done anything. I want to challenge you tonight. Do something tonight for the very first time. There could even be business people. God could speak to you to send $100,000. Just do what he tells you to do. Even $10,000, whatever, but you can do something substantial. And I thank all the people that are giving $5, $10, $20, and all of that. That's wonderful. Thank you. But there are people that have the wherewithal and the means to do something substantial. And I really want to challenge you to do that tonight. Do it. Just do it. Just step out in faith and go ahead and sow seed. Let's believe God together. There's a lot of things that we have to do here in December and there's things that are going to happen in January. And next year is going to be an epic year. Trust me. I'm a doctor. It's going to be an epic year. So let's, uh, are we ready to do uh, the blessing? Okay, we're going to roll the blessing. While they're doing that, they're going to keep 
putting the scrolls up there. If you're watching on YouTube, they will tell you what to do, all, all the stuff's there. And then on, on Facebook Live, all the instruction will be right there. And I thank all the YouTube givers. Wow, they're going crazy here with, with the giving tonight on the slide, super slide. Thank you, YouTubers. God bless you for sowing. Okay, let's roll the blessing and you give. And then when we come back, I've got, I got a, a bunch of funny stuff we're going to share with you. And we're going to get into what's actually happening in the nation. And then I'll also tell you next week, I'm actually get to host Check the News Monday to Friday because Jonathan has just been worn out. He told me earlier he ate too much turkey and he's so tired he can't do next week. No, no. but he asked me if I'd host it. He's taking his staff somewhere. And so I'll be hosting Check the News Monday to Friday. So that's going to be great. And um, next, next week's going to be pretty eventful. Somebody said, what's the cash app number, please? Dollar Sign Revival Ministries. Dollar Sign Revival Ministries. One word. And if there's a monitor on there. Thank you, Richard. $50. Thank you, Anne. For $49.99. Thank you so much, Annie Haler. Melissa, thank you. $19.99. And then... Uh, I, 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 I'm upon Jen, 400 in your currency, whatever that is. Thank you, dear lady. God bless you. Patricia, 24.99. Thank you. And then another currency, SEK, 200. Thank you so much. Shirley um, is giving 19 pounds 99. I believe she's from Scotland. Thank you. And then um, uh, it looks like B at his feet from LA, California, 24.99. Thank you for being a part Somebody gave two dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, Laurie gave forty nine ninety nine. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, and then I already mentioned Evangelist Richard gave twenty dollars, and we really, really, really appreciate it. I don't understand now. Some people give, and then this thing comes up, and it doesn't. Oh, twenty dollars. Okay, I had to click on it to see what it was. It just shows like some symbols, and I didn't know what was there. And they got like a little dancing bug waving. And I say, you, you are amazing. I could be entertained just watching <laughs> the super chat. Yeah. And then, um, is it Anton or Anton, Forty nine ninety nine. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody sowing seed tonight. And if we do have monitor, do we, do we have a monitor back there for YouTube? Are they doing? Okay, guys, the monitors, please put everything there of what to do. They're very important. And uh, Maria, thank you for mailing, for sending in a check. Uh, she's sending in $100. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of that. You help us. And, and uh, we've been helping so many people, food. We fed so many families. I mean, even last Sunday, which I'll show you some pictures, we, huge. I think, we, I think close to 700 families got turkeys last Sunday. But they actually came to the place. They were actually here. We didn't just hand them out randomly. So... Um, Anyway, and there's a lot of other stuff that we're doing. We've got enough food in. Our food banks has been restored. We have food according to what my food ministry tells me for the next two months. But um, if you need food, of course, you can come to the River Church. Thank you, Lynette. $2. God bless you and all of you that are supporting us. And uh, let's roll the blessing. Right coming out of that, I'm going to go into some funny stuff. I'm going to show you a little bit about our Thanksgiving and what we did, and then I'm going to show you about what's going. We'll start dealing with some stuff in the nation here. Thank you for your monthly support, Pat. She says it comes automatically from your bank. We really, really appreciate that. I tell you, all of you guys help us so much. Somebody's trying to give from Trinidad. Normally, if you ask Trina mom, she knows a little bit more sometimes than Trinidad. It's just a joke. I've always had that joke. But anyway, um, somebody helped them give from Trinidad. I believe you can use PayPal to do that. But um, anyway, all right, let's roll the blessing. And then we'll be right back and we're going to have some fun and we're going to talk about some things. The blessing.
Seriously. Okay. Um, you want to just come sing a cappella here quickly? A bl uh, the, bl the blessing? Anybody? Just come. No, anything. Come sing. Give a microphone. Alma, come. Help us here. Can you hear me? On YouTube now, you should be able to hear me. They just couldn't play any music. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, good. Slow down. Alma, we're fine. We've got hours here. It's all right. Relax. Alma, relax. Yeah, I don't want you out of breath. Just, It's all good. It's all good. If you think you're running, imagine what they're doing back there. All right, won't you welcome Alma Rivera as she blesses us tonight. She's here. We're just waiting for television to find her. And then she's got lessons. This is like television, television guys. So I need more music, more music, and rewind. And could, could you please start the song again, please? Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, because you are amazing, God. And, and I know that you are, you are blessed by this word that Pastor Rodney, he, he just released. I know that you are blessed. And I know that you, with your giving, you are a blessing. And you, be, you are part of this ministry, and, and, I, and we bless you for that. And just if you drive it in your living room, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, wherever you are watching, just seeing this worship with me, with us, King of Glory. Just wanna be 
Turn your sadness into dancing Is what the Bible says So just lift your hands right there Oh King of glory I will dance in your presence Oh I will dance Yes King of my peace Feel this place He's gonna turn Turn your sadness into dancing. We dance in your presence. That's so powerful, man. Great, great job. Um, I'm not trying to make excuses, guys. I just tell you, we, we're transforming everything at the ministry. So the major company, this is a professional, world-class company. For whatever reason, they, they are troubleshooting. Now, we've had some problems here the last couple of weeks with our live. And I'm going to hold their feet to the fire because this is not some little lightweight backyard operation they are a major corporation and they're going to have to deliver on what they put in here so um it's either 
somebody trying to sabotage us from inside, which that could always be the case, or it's just people don't know what they're doing, which that could also be the case. But we'll find out what's going on. We're going to... Uh, and uh, somebody just said, why isn't everybody at the church? Because we gave everybody the night off. That's why the stand is closed down tonight. I'm live, sitting on the platform, broadcasting to you. And uh, we gave them off for Thanksgiving. Because you don't want to have a service when people are stuffed with turkey. If you don't know what that's like, try having a service on a night after people have eaten turkey. Everybody goes to sleep on you. So, all right. Well, I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to play. If you're just tuning in on YouTube, if you do something, if you can click like on the program, we still have an hour, just have an hour left. I don't know if I should say fortunately, <laughs> we have a, just have an hour left. Well, I'm so happy about that. But um, it'll just push us in the final remaining hour for more viewers to tune in. And then also, we picked up 100 subscribers so far. We had 98,800 uh, subscribers, and we really wanted to get to that 100,000 mark. If you can click subscribe and the bell, which you'll be notified of when we do go live. All right, I'm going to play, put a bunch of pictures up. We, we've got some clips that we're going to play and all kinds of stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and believe that it is live and everything's going to work out perfectly for the remainder of the duration of the program. And um, so let's go ahead, put up the first picture, and then I'll talk about it while it's up. First picture. I'll tell you what it is. Um, okay. I'm not sure if that, not the tweets, uh, Tony, I don't need the tweets right now. I need the pictures, the one I sent. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, that first one was the president, which we'll get to that later. And you're going to have to put the tweet for that up first otherwise I don't know what he I can't remember the context of what it was that was our Thanksgiving and as you can see we didn't have uh, six people there I think we had like over 55 with kids and everything it was it was it was huge beautiful beautiful day next picture there you can see us standing outside we had we had people that were all by themselves uh, you know just at their house and I said no you're not going to be at just by yourself come of course, Ray had to wear the sunglasses. I don't know if he thought he looked cool, or whatever. But normally, if you wear sunglasses, because you're either probably a dictator or a cult leader, you know. But uh, you don't see me in sunglasses, do you? You know, you just see me there standing like a normal person. But some people, they want to be, you know. I'm just kidding. Okay, Ray, we love you. Okay, don't curl up in a fetal position and cry for three hours. All right, <laughs> that was our Thanksgiving at our house yesterday. Okay, next. Okay, these are some of the funny ones here. I think I've got some other personal ones, which I'm sure we'll get to, but uh, this, was <laughs> this is people having Thanksgiving, probably in California. You can see the perspex separating them. Can you please drone me? The mashed potatoes. You see the drone flying over head, which would then pick up the mashed potatoes and deliver to your table. Really great. Um, welcome to the to the new world that they would like to put you in. All right, next. Okay, things that don't exist: Bigfoot, fairies, unicorns, and then office of the president elect. They don't exist. They all fabricated, made up by by crazy people. All right. These are all stuff that I post on my Twitter and I irritate everybody. Sorry about that. Can't help myself. Next. Okay. Yeah, this turkey's come to see this clairvoyant and she looks in the glass and she says to the turkey, I would not make any plans for Christmas. Because you can see the puzzled look on his face. He doesn't know why she's telling him that. But... Some didn't actually make any plans for Thanksgiving either. Next. <laughs> Turkey's talking in the yard. Before the end of November, we need to learn to do that. See the birds flying in the background? <laughs> I find stuff like it funny. Uh, please forgive me. I, you know. All right, next. <laughs> He's looking at today's temperature, Thursday's temperature, 350 degrees ago. That can't be right. There has to be something wrong with that one. All right. Next. Okay. So 
come back at me. Yeah. That's Bambi. And yeah, I did that to her. Okay, so what happened was on Tuesday morning when I woke up, because I hadn't done any hunting in like several years. Oh, actually, I take it back. A month ago, I went and got a doe. So I had one doe, but we had all these people coming over, and I had to get meat, you know. I provide meat. So we said, yeah, but you had the supermarket that you could go and buy. But where did that meat come from? You know what I mean? So if you bought, if you bought beef or pig or turkey or chicken or fish or lamb, those were all roaming animals at one time. They didn't just wrap themselves in uh, cellophane and have a price stamped on them and you come in and buy them. They were actually walking animals. So I like to get mine fresh off the field. And because I do headshots, the animals don't suffer. They don't even know what happened. I, I, I'm a sniper. They call me sniper. And, and I, I'm one time, and they're down. They're gone. They don't even know what... You know, they were just looking, and then there were lights out under very heavy anointing. And so what happened Tuesday morning when I woke up, I said to my wife, I said, I really feel I need to go get something for the table. And so she said, what are you going to do? Well, I called like four different places that I knew where I could hunt and could go and get the animals. And everyone said, boy, if you'd have just called us yesterday, it was fine. Now I could even hunt for free. So I found this one ranch where I had hunted probably five years ago, you know, and uh, the guy knows me. What's happening, guys? There's something we need to know about? Okay. Do you want to go get a table where you guys can sit and have coffee and maybe some cheesecake while the show's going on? Be great. All right. Sorry, it's just we got people here interacting with each other offset, and uh, I'm trying to find out if there's something that I need to know. But there's nothing. They just, everybody just enjoying themselves here and probably still too much of the turkey from yesterday. So anyway, so I, uh, I called this place up, and he called me back, and he said to me, he said, um, uh, I said, did you get my message? He said, no, I didn't. And I said, he said, this is Dr. Rodney. I said, yes. He said, you're like a living legend. He said, what, what do you need? I said, well, I need some does. I need two does. I want to come back, come up and shoot. I, you know, I don't want to go shoot a big buck because that's a lot of money for an animal because those are all trophy animals. So you go spend money on a, on a huge buck. You can end up paying seven, dollars $8,000 for these trophy animals. I'm not looking for trophy. I just want something to cook. You know, I don't eat the horns. I don't know if, you, I don't know if you've ever tried eating horns. It's kind of tough. So that's why if I shoot a doe in the head, I save all the meat. And then we make sausage. I make biltong, which is a South African delicacy. It's dried meat. It's like a jerky, but it's done differently. And then we make sausage and everything. So every part of that animal is used. So he said, if you can be a 230, Pastor Allen horse was with me. He said, if you can be a 230, you'll come. I'll take you to a place you can go shoot. So I went up there, and he said, now I'm going to put you in a field. And I still had to go another 35. So this is about an hour and 30 minutes north of my house, and then another 40 minutes north of there, close to Ocala, on a 2,000-acre ranch. And the animals, this was huge buck, and they were in rut, which I'd never been in the middle of that. Let me tell you right now, the, the buck does not care. He doesn't care about you, and the does don't care about you. They're just interested in each other. And it's, it's actually, if you get caught in a field between a buck and a doe, you're in trouble. He'll, go, he'll, he'll gorge you. I mean, he'll, he'll gore you. I mean, he'll, it'll be like you look like you're a bullfighter in Mexico, you know, or Spain. So um, it was pretty crazy. So we get in there, and within the first 10 minutes, I could have shot two does. I said, no, I want to watch the interaction. So we drove around the property. I, I shot the first doe, which I thought was a big doe. The second doe was even bigger. And then this buck was right, he was right there with her, and he wanted a piece of me. So put the picture up again. This is the first doe that I shot. That's the second one. And uh, of course, my teacher said, I love animals, and they taste really good. Anyway, all right, that's the other one. Now, don't get all upset with me, shot Bambi. This is all game management. You can't just let them breed. They breed cr like crazy, and you have to maintain your herds on the property. If you don't know anything about that, sorry, I can't tell you that. Think about it when you eat the chicken from Chick-fil-A. That There was some chicken. That chicken had a life, and you, you took it. Okay, next picture. 
this is the buck that was on that, on that doe. And he wanted a piece of me. Somebody said, well, did you shoot him? I'm not stupid. I'm not pulling a trigger at $8,000. Pastor Allen collects watches. He said, Pastor, that's a watch. So every buck that Pastor Allen saw, it changed into the face of a, of a watch, you know. And he said, <laughs> he said, that's costly. Don't shoot that thing. And I said to, I said to the, the game warden of the thing, I said, what if that thing charges me and I shoot in self-defense? He said, $8,000. I said, okay. So obviously I'm not going to spend that kind of money on some horns. Again, very hard to eat horns. I like meat. And they gave me a really good deal on the two dough. Okay, next. There you can see them skinning the dough. Next picture. I know this is gory for some people. Okay, so I get back. I think I had some other pictures of the skinning, but that's fine. We'll jump to that. And what I did was I put bacon in. I cut holes in the leg. I put bacon in. I put, I put garlic in there, and then I put some red wine in because it burns off all the alcohol, but it takes away the game taste. And you can see I put in there sweet potatoes and onion, and we cooked it on slow from about 6 o'clock in the evening till 6 in the morning. Then when I walked out the next morning, uh, put the next picture up. Look at that. I went in there, I picked the bones, and the meat fell off the bones. So on Wednesday morning, the day before Thanksgiving, I had some eggs and venison. And that, it was, some people said that looked like beef. It's not. That's venison. That's deer meat. By the way, I ate some of that yesterday. By the way, I ate some of that today. I didn't eat any turkey. I still feasted on that same venison. And guess what? Tomorrow, I'll eat some of it again. So it's really just great. That was our Thanksgiving. And we had all kinds of meat and stuff like that. I didn't eat any ham. I didn't eat any turkey. I didn't eat, I didn't eat any lamb. I didn't eat any... I'm trying to think what else we had. There was other meat. I didn't eat anything. I, I ate venison. It was, it was epic. Okay, next. Okay, so we're getting to that now. Um, all right, so this is President Trump, and he's, he's sitting at the, uh, I believe it was the White House. I'm trying to, I don't know where he was, but this reporter was giving him a hard time, and he just told him, be quiet, you're lightweight, and don't talk to me that way. If we can play the clip, that would be great. Okay, go ahead and play it. I mean, they have Biden beating Obama on Obama's vote in areas that mattered in terms of the election, in swing states. And yet he's losing to Obama all over the place. But he's beating Obama in swing states, which are the states that mattered for purposes of the election. So, no, I can't say that at all. I think it's a, it's a possibility. They're trying to close between you people, don't answer, don't talk to me that way. You're just a, you're just a lightweight. Don't talk to me that. Way. Don't talk. To, I'm the president of the United States. Don't ever talk to the president that way. All right, I'm going to go with another question. Go ahead. This election was a fraud. I mean, they have Biden beating Obama on Obama's vote. He says you're just a lightweight, which they are. I mean, the rudeness of the mainstream media is beyond the pale. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. And if I was the president, I would have him physically removed and thrown out and remove his press pass and never allow him back in the White House again, period. At least have some respect. And they just talk nonsense. I mean, that's all they do. Talk total rubbish. Next. Okay, so this is a, a, a tweet that was put out. This is, I won't go into this in depth but look what it says, stunning. In 2020, there's no increase in overall deaths. COVID has de decreased every other type of death. To summarize, more COVID and less everything else equals the same as always. A closer look at the U.S. deaths due to COVID-19. This is not from some crazy conspiracy theorist. This is from the John Hopkins uh, University. So these are the deaths. It, it, there's, there's no change as, as of last year or the year before or the year before. So they're just, what they're doing is, they're just throwing it, bring it back to me. They're just throwing it all into the same category because they're frantically trying to keep this pandemic going so that they can come in now. You, everybody must wear a mask. 
Because if you don't wear a mask, you're going to kill everybody, and then everybody's going to have to take the vaccine, which the vaccine's going to kill more people than you can imagine. And vaccine will only take care of a very small portion if it's even successful, but it's going to kill a lot of people. All right, next. Okay, this is the dog right after eating turkey. You can see he just like kind of had it. Oh, it was that turkey. They gave me the turkey. I mean, can you believe it? I mean, I'm trying to stay awake here and be on point here, and they keep feeding me turkey. Look at him. Look at him. Okay, next. Oh, uh, I, is this Walmart? <laughs> is this <laughs> is this Black Friday sale? Oh yeah, yeah. So you weren't able to, you couldn't go to Thanksgiving with your family, but uh, that was okay. Yeah, to buy Chinese junk and save forty nine ninety nine on a flat screen computer that actually spies on you, even when it's off. Next. In the campaign to urge Americans to take okay. the shot. The swine flu vaccine yes, has been taken by many important persons, he this wrote. Example, the... President Ford, Henry Kissinger, Elton John, Muhammad Ali, Mary Tyler Moore, Rudolph Nureyev, Walter Cronkite, Ralph Nader, Edward Kennedy, etc., etc. Mary, did you take a swine flu shot? No, I did not. Did you give them permission to use your name saying that you had or were going to? Absolutely not. Never did. Dr. David Sensor, then head of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, is now in private industry. He devised the swine flu program, and he pushed it. Where did this so-called deadly variety of flu, where did it first hit back in 1976? It began right here at Fort Dix in New Jersey in January of that year, when a number of recruits began to complain of respiratory ailments, something like the common cold. An army doctor here sent samples of their throat cultures to the New Jersey Public Health Lab to find out just what kind of bug was going around here. One of those samples was from a Private David Lewis who had left his sickbed to go on a forced march. Private Lewis had collapsed on that march, and his sergeant had revived him by mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. But the sergeant showed no signs of illness. A few days later, Private Lewis died. The New Jersey lab identified most of those soldiers' throat cultures as the normal kind of flu virus going around that year, but they could not make out what kind of virus was in the culture from the dead soldier and from four others who were sick. So they sent those cultures to the Federal Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia, for further study. A few days later, they got the verdict, swine flu. But that much publicized outbreak of swine flu at Fort Dix involved only Private Lewis, who died, and those four other soldiers who recovered completely without the swine flu shot. If I had known at that time that the boy had been in a sick bed, got up, went out on a forced march, and then collapsed and died, I would never have taken a shot. You in the campaign to earn. All right, so that's actually out of a long clip. That was back in the 70s, ladies and gentlemen. And then they say all these superstars and that took the shots and all that kind of stuff. It's all garbage. This is just the way they manipulate you through propaganda. Next. Oh, oh breaking news. Trump misses a putt. Can you believe it? Play, play that. Okay, so Trump misses a putt. This is news now. This is the hill. Major news happening today. Trump's putting, and he missed the putt. Unbelievable. I mean, it wasn't even a short putt either. It was a long putt. I saw Tiger Woods make 10 on one hole. Okay, bring him back to me. Put the tweet back up so I can read you. This is the news. This is what they're doing. It doesn't matter. Put, put that tweet up again. <clears throat> okay, so I said if Trump made it, headline would read, while millions die, Trump makes putt. Sickening journalism from the bloated soy boys at the Hill. Okay, I told you I mock, I mock the prophets of Baal. All right, next. Okay, so this, this is up in Canada, I believe in Etobicoke, Etobicoke. I heard Jonathan last night check the news, just butchered the name. 
butchered the name. I mean, terrible job on the name. It's called Etobico, I believe it is in Canada. I hope I did a better job than what he did. I mean, anyway, it's beside the point. Justin Hart says, so they sent 97 cops to stop people from getting a sandwich in Toronto. Play the clip. 97 cops. You will not eat sandwich. Hook it up. The great reset. Here. The great reset. Yo, the government destroyed the economy. Wow, Canadians starting to stand up uh, over sandwiches. Come on, boys, to the north. Time to stand up for freedom and liberty. Give me sandwich or give me death. All right, next. Okay, the great Harmi Dillon, she's an attorney out of San Francisco. I've spoken to her. She's from the Sikh religion, but she's really fighting for the church, and she's a phenomenal attorney. She's filing lawsuits even right now on behalf of President Trump. She's independent. She does a great job. She said it's hard to shop small when Democrats, because she's responding to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who says today, many are buying gifts or donations for the holiday season. Right now, small business and food aids across the country really need our help. Let's help and commit to shopping small this year whenever we can, and then comment, you know, and whatever. And she goes, hard to shop small when Democrat governors have unnecessarily killed millions of small businesses this year. Maybe light a candle for them instead as we worship at the shrines of Amazon, Costco, and the other behemoths like Walmart and whatever else. Great tweet, Hamid Dillon. Next. Breaking news, 911. Just in Republican David Valadeo flips the House seat in California. They're still flipping House seats. It's still happening, ladies and gentlemen. Personally, come right back at me. I think he won California. I mean, if we did an audited, fully audited hand count, verification of every ballot signature, there's not a dead person, nobody's duck voted or poodle or pooch or cat or parrot voted or great-great-grandmother from the 1700s voted. He won. He won overwhelmingly. Next. Neuted neuted lungfish. Sorry, Newt Kigrish. He said... The more data that comes out and vote anomalies that clearly are not legitimate, the more it looks like 2020 may be the biggest presidential theft since Adams and Clay robbed Andrew Jackson in 1824. And he said they should demand recounts. But a recount's not going to happen. It has to be audited, audited, verified. Next. Okay, Dr. Fauci, Andrew Cuomo, and AOC are nominated for Tom Person of the Year. You can't make this stuff up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not The Onion or even Babylon Bee. This is the New York Post reporting on the fact that these three clowns have been nominated for Time Person of the Year. Amazing. Next. Okay, Harmi Dillon again. She said, on this Black Friday, I brought a sweater pattern by American knitwear designer, edited and approved FRAP 28J filing re-scotus op, confirmed that turkey lovers are yuck. And I'm now sunscreening, up for a hike, maybe must be fit for future legal battles, many planned. So anyway, she's saying she's buying American. Next. Oh, this is hilarious. So uh, if you remember, Biden talked about the Book of Palms and somebody made that this is really great. And I'm going to play the hound out of this next week 
on Check the News. Go ahead and roll this clip. Get ready for it. The Book of Palms. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist with the palmist who wrote these following words. True international average of pressure. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Uh, roll it one more time. That is hilarious. Whoever did this is like... And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist, with the palmist who wrote these following words. True and international average of pressure. <laughs> now, he, <laughs> he actually quoted from the Psalms. So it shows you the guys never actually ever read the Bible. But whoever, <laughs> you've got to play one more time. Come on. That is like very funny today. I watched this several times. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist, with the palmist who wrote these following words. True and international average of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Breaking news. Trump announces a rally in Georgia on Saturday night. That's, that's the 5th of December, so that'll be not tomorrow. That'll be the 5th. Big rally. Obviously, it's for those two running for the Senate, the runoffs or whatever. And that's put out by Gateway Pundit. So, hey, he's still doing a campaign. Next. All right, so <clears throat> play this. This one says here, yeah. oh, this was put up by Rising Serpent. It's like a real scary Twitter handle, Rising Serpent. Rising Serpent. Well, we don't know what is last. Uh, if you look at what's going on, you have to really take a look at what's going on. Uh, they're finding tremendous discrepancies in the votes. And nobody believes those numbers. Those numbers are uh, incorrect numbers. Uh, a lot of numbers have already been reported that's incorrect. You're going to see things happening over the next week or two that are going to be shocking to people. Uh, if you look. Yeah, you are. All right, next. Uh, breaking Arizona State Legislature to hold hearing on election integrity Monday. Giuliani and Jenna Ellis will represent President Trump. So it, it's going, folks, these things are going to be filed. It doesn't matter what Pennsylvania does. It's all going to the Supreme Court anyway. Next. All right. Hey, this is interesting. Trump 2016 campaign advisor Carter Page is now suing Comey, McCabe, and the FBI, and the Department of Justice, and others. That's according to Bloomberg. Okay, Next. All right, so Lou Dobbs, and I believe he's on Fox, he says, which I don't watch Fox, but to believe Biden received 80 million legal votes, you also have to believe that Biden shattered Barack Obama's own popular vote totals. While Trump received record support amongst minority, to believe that, you also have to believe that Biden drove Obama's popularity in 2008 and 2000, or 20, 2012, which obviously he's got too many zeros. Hey, Lou. Uh, lighten up on the gin there, bro, when you tweet. Okay, next. All right, Mayor Denver tells citizens not to travel just before boarding his flight to travel. These, these people, I mean, can you imagine that? Uh, telling all the citizens of Denver, Colorado, please do not travel. And then he goes straight to the airport to get on a plane to travel. Unbelievable. Next. Now, this is what they find. 47 missing election USB cards. Bring it around back to me. So part of this stuff was, because these are all computer, the, the voting machines computerized, that there are special USB cards. And there's 47 cards missing, and each card carries 50,000 votes. And they're missing. Now, they already counted those votes, but they have no way to verify the votes because the cards are missing. 
So Cohen, you, you can't tell me this is legit, ladies and gentlemen. This is fraudulent on every front. Next. All right, Major Patriot. I don't know these people. I just pulled the tweets off, you know, so I'm, I'm just reading what they said. The election is much bigger than President Trump, which it is. Honest elections are all we have left. How our election systems are allowed to come to so perilous close to third world level. Ramshackle is inexcusable, which is much like our sound here at the River Church and the studio today. But our government not only failed us miserably, they allowed it to happen, which... Trump was warning people about this back in 2012, that there was a problem with the whole election system. Next, Newsmax, which I didn't really actually watch them. I just see the tweets. I know everybody's going to Newsmax, but I don't really watch TV. I watch some golf, and I watch Check the News. That's all. Um, he's, this guy is on, shares details on the compelling evidence to be presented on behalf of Trump team in the contested state. And this is to do with Nevada. I think it's only four seconds. Can you even say something in four seconds? Is this the same guy that has ears? His ears are used as radar. So probably he doesn't even have radio equipment. He, those ears just flap and he picks stuff up. Roll it if there is a video. And are you hopeful that they're going to rule in your favor? You know, I, I always say that I never know exactly what a court is, is going to do. I can only say what evidence that we are going to, to present. And the evidence that we are going to present will be compelling, will be extremely um, uh, strong, showing that the, uh, the result of Nevada was wrong um, when it was uh, certified to go for, for uh, Joseph Biden, because, in fact, Donald Trump is the one who, uh, who won Nevada. And so that is, is what we can do. We can go in and put that evidence forward, and we are very confident that will be very compelling for any court that hears this evidence. Hey, great, Jesse. Great, great hearing. Great hearing. Phenomenal. Next. All right, so this one, this is, uh, I'm trying to remember what this was. Let's play this. Oh, yeah, he walks into the store, and there's a sign on there that says you can't enter without a mask. So he carries his mask in his hand, and the owner tries to make him put it on. He said, I'm not. The sign says I, don't, I just must enter with a mask, and I have it here. So he says, put it on. Watch what happens here. And if there's any language, yeah, please forgive me. It's TikTok. Put a mask on for me. Put a mask on. Why would I do that? I mean, it's required. You got a sign there on the door. Yeah. Mask required to enter the store. Right. Care to put it on? It doesn't tell me to put it on. Well, I mean, I figured it was common sense. No, it's not common sense. So just put the mask on. No, it doesn't say to put the mask on. Dude, so put it on or get the fuck out. I'm not getting out. You need to fix your sign before I get out. I mean, you kind of got a point, but can you just put it on for me this time? I'll put it on. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is just great. That is just great. I want to see that one more time. It's called the resistance. Hey, man, you care to put your mask on for me? Put a mask on, why would I do that? I mean, it's required. You got a sign there on the door. Yeah. Mask required to enter the store. Right. You care to put it on? It doesn't tell me to put it on. Well, I mean, I figured it was common sense. No, it's not common sense. So just important. put the mask on. No, it doesn't say to put the mask on. So Dude. Put it on or get the fuck out. I'm not getting out. You need to fix your sign before I get out. I mean, you kind of got a point, but can you just put it on for me this time? I'll put it on. I appreciate it. Fucking damn kid. That's great. So you know what to do with, with your mask. Yeah, somebody in the comments said he held the door with his bare hands and holding the door. You know, so it's not... Folks, it's all about compliance, you know. Next. Okay, so what we got here, who's this? The garden gnome, Fauci. He says here, or Thomas Paine says, more than two-thirds of Americans oppose mandatory COVID-19 vaccinations, so, which is what they want to do. This is, what, this is what they want to do. They want to go house to house and stick a needle in you, which I have needles that I can give them, but the hole is much bigger than the hole they want to give me. The hole I have is the size of a 45. Next. 
In Detroit, listen to this, Democrats were impersonating Republican poll watchers. Bring it on back to me. So you're supposed to have poll watchers to make sure that they're counting and that no shenanigans are being, you know. And they had Democrats pretending to be Republicans. So there actually was nobody there. The fox was guarding the hen house. This thing is so crooked. On election night, as I've said before, the president was leading in Georgia. He was leading in North Carolina. He was leading in Pennsylvania. He was leading in Wisconsin. He was leading in Michigan. All those states have put him right over, and he would have been president-elect and would have been going for his second term. At, I believe it was 11 o'clock, they stopped counting. Stopped counting. By morning, Biden was leading. Now, here's the problem. In Pennsylvania alone, he was down 700,000 votes, and they found that overnight. It does not work that way, people. And there were people at the polling stations, I mean at the polling, at the counting, who were told to go home. We stopped counting. We're told to go home. They, they continued to count after the ones that were supposed to be there were sent home. All this stuff is illegal, totally illegal. And here's the problem. The media called the presidency for Biden. Media has no right. The presidency has not officially been called. The states are the ones that call it. It still has the opportunity then to be questioned, as it did with Al Gore, 37 days to the middle of December 2000. They were still debating. They were still questioning. The president still has a lot of time. And in actual fact, nothing gets sealed until January when all the electors meet in Washington, D.C. So he's got plenty of time between now and the 20th of January. We have to fight because we have to make sure that this thing is done properly. Next. Okay, yeah, this is funny. Uh, this uh, person tweeted, they Vice President-elect Storm Nicole. Many people, if you go on their Twitter handle, they become Vice President-elect, they become President-elect, and they, you know, which they call themselves that because these guys are called themselves that, so why don't you just do that? And um, I, I called myself President-elect, and I was waiting, and nobody called me. I thought even that I would get a call from the nation of Wakanda, Wakanda, just to congratulate me, but we didn't get anything but I called the Donica First Lady for a day, and she called me President-elect, and we ran around and tried to look intelligent. But anyway. Okay, next. Uh, put, put that back up again. Okay. No, no, the previous one, quickly. Okay, so 47 USB cards are missing in Pennsylvania. Uh, creepy Uncle Joe is a national security threat, has dementia, and could only get 1,000 people to listen to his babble on Thanksgiving. We talked about, as the Book of Palms said, but major lords, lawsuits were filed in several states proving voter fraud. But here's the journalism where they, I showed you earlier, where President Trump misses a putt while golfing in Virginia. Uh, 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 excuse me. What's wrong with you? Because they don't want to. Uh, they don't even want to announce. They won't even make an announcement that, that Joe Biden only had 1,000 people listen to his Thanksgiving message, which was a, which was a nightmare which was a total nightmare. Okay, next. All right, emergency Wisconsin lawsuit to stop certification challenge and nearly 160,000 votes that are in question, which all of this stuff will flip the state totally back to Trump. Next. Attention, Trump campaign. Greed party candidate Jill Stein won groundbreaking case in October, giving campaign right to examine voting machine source code. So this is the Jill. Jill ran in 2016. I think she was part of the Green Party, and she felt like her votes were being stolen. So she filed a lawsuit, and she won the case, which is really huge that Trump can actually use, so we can investigate the source code of the the, the machines. Very very important. Next. Uh, Jim Core, the late, uh, the late, late toy show is a popular Christmas kids show in Ireland, and they just couldn't resist the opportunity to use a child to promote the Pfizer vaccine while brainwashing the children watching the show. Now, I'm not sure if we have the clip of this. If you do, can you put it up? Play it. Here the 
Now he gets medicine because, to help him with coronavirus. Oh, great. So did he actually have the, he, the, the virus? Uh, I think so. Okay. And over here is the regurgitation station What's if that? he needs to vomit oh, I see. after the medicine. Okay. Now we need to get him a Pfizer um, vaccine. Gosh, you don't waste time, do you, Sir Shep? <laughs> You're ahead of the game, so does no. he like... He's not participating, so we're going to have to knock him out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're told he's having a rough day at the, uh, at the clinic. Okay, so you knocked him out. Now we need to just check if he's still with us. Okay, that's a good thing. Yep, he's still with us. He's still with us. Okay, this is great. This is a story of survival, isn't it? <laughs> so what happens Now he gets the Pfizer vaccine. Bang. Okay. And now... He has to stay in this pod for the next 87 days. That's a serious quarantine. Because there is a backlog with the HSE. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, they love that. Yeah, okay. So you're going to leave him in there for 87 days. Okay. And according, according to the Department of Education, schools are safe. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a bad thing, is it? <laughs> Do you like school? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's okay. And do you like writing letters? Yeah. Yeah, because I have this beautiful scrapbook of letters. She used a hammer. I thought I was rough on this dough. She hit the teddy bear in the head with a hammer, but then pronounced a vaccine. That's Ireland for you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, next. All right, Sidney Powell built a case in three weeks while John Durham can't figure out anything in three years, which we don't even know where. Is John Durham, is he actually a person? Or is he just a folklore legend? Like William Barr. William Barr and John Durham. Bring it back. Are these real people? Do they actually exist? William Barr. William Barr. If you're out there, America needs you. Durham, Durham, where are you? Where are you? Next. Ted Cruz. Okay, so John Brennan, which you know who he is. So he goes on. This is a criminal act, highly reckless. It risks lethal, lethal, lethal retaliation and a new round of regional conflict. Iranian leaders would be wise to wait for the return of responsible American leadership on, on the global stage and to resist the urge to respond against perceived culprits. And so Ted Cruz says, it's bizarre to see a former head of the CIA consistently siding with Iranian zealots who chance death to America. So they think that Joe is responsible. Amazing. Bring back the clip of Palms quickly. This is the man that's going to be responsible for restoring order to the world. Ladies and gentlemen. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist, with the palmist who wrote these following words. True and international suffered the pressure. That's the man that they've chosen to bring order back to the world, bring America back and restore our status in the world. <laughs> you better laugh. Next. Now, this is wild. I, listen, you see, I couldn't do any of this, but this California, California pastor turns his chapel into a strip club to be, uh, do, because it's deemed essential. In California, they say strip clubs are essential. So sometimes you've got to get creative to spread the gospel. And so what he does, he, he comes out. I don't think we have the clip. If we do have it, tell me. But he comes out and he takes off his tie. That's the, you better not have it. But I've watched it. It's, it's like, and he dances like, you know, like he's in a strip club. And then he swings his tie, takes it off, and throws it. And that's now official. Bring it back to me like a strip club. Folks, I ain't doing any of that nonsense. Because I've been wearing a tie anyway. So what would I take off? My shirt? 
I don't want to empty the field. Some says you've got to be creative. No, we have a constitution. Why didn't you get arrested? That's being creative. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to strip next Sunday. You are? Honey, don't do it. Don't do it. No, I'm going to take my towel off. We just have to wear a, a handkerchief. I'm going to strip. And then have them play music. And then pull the handkerchief out. And then throw it. And now we're official as a strip club. I mean, <laughs> you, you, that's not even church. That's called shake and bake. All right. Next. So the Bradford Files said, Biden should confess now and beg Trump for pardon. Yeah, Trump could even give him a room in the Willard, like they did the two, tur the two turkeys that stayed overnight. Who is it? Corn? Corn and uh, Cobb. Corn and Cobb. And I think they pardoned Corn. But Cobb also got in because he was a friend of, of Cobb. Okay, next. Wisconsin voters file lawsuit to dismiss, dismiss election results. There's a lot of stuff happening, folks. It's not over. It's not over till the fat angel sings. I told you this several weeks ago. It's not over. It's not over. Okay, next. All right, Kevin McCullough. I don't even know who this guy, but KMC Radio must be on a radio talk show. I just saw the thing, and it was on his Twitter. And it said, yeah, good morning. In Pennsylvania, a judge halted certification. In Wisconsin, a judge allowed a petition on 150,000 ballots. In Nevada, a judge uh, shared evidentiary hearing. In, in, in Michigan, Sydney Power, military intel can prove switches. In Georgia, Sydney Powell could show Dominion bribe. She's actually got the check stubs of the money that was paid to the people to bribe them. And Linwood get, uh, whatever, a review for the 11th. It's... Folks, it's not over. The 11th of, of December. This thing's going to be a fight. This is court battles. This is going all the way to the Supreme Court. And I believe the Supreme Court's going to vote in favor of the president. If they don't, then you know the whole Supreme Court is compromised. But you can see what just happened. They voted 5-4 against the mayor of New York. So it's not over till the fat angel sings. It ain't over. People want to know who, what, what the fat angel's name is. His name is Vinny. He's an Italian angel. And he got fat because he ate pasta. He loves pasta and pizza. All right. Next, Matt Brainerd. I don't even know who this person is. I just saw the tweet. Update. He says, yeah, I'll be presenting the VIP findings in person at the Arizona hearing. Hashtag Arizona. This is happening Monday. Work from the VIP have now appeared or will appear in the court filings in Pennsylvania, which everybody says, oh, you, you know, that was two hours before, well, probably from about midday today when I sent the clip. So it's two hours. So that's today. So it doesn't matter that Pennsylvania, uh, you know, said they don't receive it, whatever. They filing. There's huge court cases here. Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, including declarations we collected. And we'll be there on Wednesday, the 2nd of December. Or the 12th. Is it the 12th? Yeah. The 2nd of December. So. So it's happening. It's not over. Next. All right. This is Melissa Tate. Um, she's a friend of ours. Uh, and I have met her through the phone. I actually wrote a, a forward for a book. That's coming out, new book that's coming out. You can follow her at called The Right Melissa. She's actually from Zimbabwe. She's a great lady. Anyway, she, she tweets this. She said, the media has trained millions of America to hate Trump more than they love their own freedom. Millions are now like rabid dogs trained to have one um, uh, pavilion response. Um, Pavlov. Pavlov's dogs. Okay, if you remember when they, when they rang the bell, they started drooling. All right. So they hate Trump. While they lose sight of everything else, including embracing censorship of their political opponents, draconian lockdowns, political violence, etc. Everything they said Trump would be if elected is what the left are now and the way that the media have trained everybody. Next. 
All right, Richard Grenon, he says the case against Michael Flynn was completely overblown. And of course, we know Michael Flynn just got a pardon from the president, totally pardoned. He was exonerated. Of course, they, they dropped the case against him, but the president officially pardoned him. Bring it right back to me. And of course, the media is saying that Trump is using uh, his executive powers to create clemency for too many people. I think the president, I, I'm trying to get the numbers right, I think the president only pardoned like 45 people, 46 people, in almost four years, 46 people. Obama pardoned, I think, 1,900 plus people in eight years. So don't come here and talk that the president is over pardoning people. If anything, he's been very under pardoning. Because if you go look at the people that... Anyway, leave it alone. I don't want to go back into the previous administrator, administration. Next. Chinese scientists. This is amazing. Breaking news. The, the, the Daily Mail online. Chinese scientists claim coronavirus originated in India? Amid a heat wave when humans and animals drank the same water? Bring it back. They blame India. The last time I checked, Wuhan is not even close to India. Talk about passing the blame. It didn't, it didn't happen in India. We know for a fact. It did not happen in India. The Indians are innocent people. India's done a lot of things, but they did not, <laughs> they have nothing to do with, with the bat flu. Next. All right, Alice, I don't know who she is, but she tweeted this. Democrat T.J. Cox loses to Republican David. I mentioned that. So that's in California's 21st Congress, Congressional District. If, if they recounted everybody, bring them back to me, there's no telling what we'd find. We'll probably flip the whole House, flip the Senate, Supreme Court's being flipped, and Trump is due another four years. That's the way that it is. You might not like it, but there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, you know, somebody said in the, in the comment, it's the China virus. The China Paris. China. It's Kung Flu. Okay, next. Wow, now I just played you that, that picture of that kid, that video of the kid injecting her doll with COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer. But Ireland, this came off one hour before we got it to the show. Ireland to lift COVID-19 curbs ahead of many European countries. That is a miracle. Or can you click on that? Or not? We can't. Okay. We'll just Google it. So it's on Reuters. You know, I don't, I just read the headlines. I don't really read the articles. <laughs> you know, I've got better things to do, sit and read fake news. All right, next. Oh, okay, this is what's happening here. So, you see, that's our flagpole. It's 81, uh, sorry, it's 80 foot high. The flagpole out the back here, around where the food trucks are, and I'm turning it into a giant Christmas tree, starting Monday. I have special strands of lights that change colors. You can see it's, it's going to be epic, and I've got a giant star that's going on the top. It's like a picture of my wife, Adonica, an angel. She'll go on top of the tree. I'm kidding. It's a star that will go up there. You'll see that Christmas tree from the fairway. From, from the fairway. I played golf this week. From the highway. From the highway. It's going to be the biggest Christmas tree around Tampa. It's going to be epic. And I've got snow machines coming. And we're going to snow the whole field. I mean, it, I'm talking about the whole field is going to have snow for the next through Christmas. Somebody said, you have a Christmas tree? Yes. Why? Because I want to. 
Well, Jesus didn't have a Christmas tree. No, but he was the first gift that God gave the world. And he was the one that instituted Christmas when the angel sang, joy to the world, the Lord has come. And God hung him on the tree. And that's what I see every time I see a Christmas tree. It reminds me of Jesus, the lamb that was born to die, that was hung on the cross. I know. Well, that's just pagan. I just can't believe it. Fine, you don't have to have a tree. Just leave me alone. I'll have a tree. We can have a whole tree, and this thing's going to be lit up. It'll be ready by Sunday the 5th. And the snow machines are coming on sorry, Sunday the 6th. By Saturday the 5th, the tree will be up. And by Sunday the 6th, on the day of our 24 years here at the river, the tree will be lit. We'll do a big night. We're going to do a big morning, but we'll do a big night because the snow machines will be going. And it's going to be epic. I'm going to cover everybody in snow. Somebody says, yeah, but you're in Florida. You don't have snow. Well, Disney has snow in Florida. And if Disney can have snow, then I can have snow. So, going to be epic. Next. Oh, this was Sunday morning, last Sunday morning at the river. This is the stand, ladies and gentlemen, from the back of the field. They packed all the way through. Come on now. You and your cowboy hat. Throw down. Even the cones get themselves an umbrella. The great Eric Gornian, ladies and gentlemen, the cameraman official there on that sweep right through. And you can see the heaters are even on the field. So I even bought heaters now so that people can be warmed because Florida gets so cold here. It can get like 57 degrees, you know. Somebody said that's not cold. That's cold for Floridians, you know. So I, I've even bought heaters. We've got more heaters coming, so it's really great. I mean, this field is like five star. I don't know of any other field. I've traveled the world. I've been in 85 countries, never seen a field like this. This is like a really, 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 really a genuine field of dreams. It's like five star. The only thing we haven't done yet is serve lobster under the umbrellas. But we might do that. Before sending that. Well, I stay away from lobster. We do something junky. Pizza. <laughs> Roll that one more time. You've got to see, this is the field. It's 440 foot from the back of the field to the front of the platform. 440 foot. That's two acres. Two acres of AstroTurf with umbrellas and heaters. And now the snow machines are coming and a giant Christmas tree. It don't get better than this, ladies and gentlemen. Roll it one more time. Okay, so um, you see the, 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 the nice, um, comfortable chairs are the people, people bring their own chairs so that we don't have any chairs on the field. 
and we just do that on purpose so when people leave they take the chairs with them we have other chairs for some people that are too lazy to bring their own chairs and then they bring uh, the chair that we supply for them and um, so anyway it's crazy you see cowboy hats boots we have a place special where we can feed the horses as people ride in from out of state on horseback we have special hay that we feed them so it's, pre it's pretty cool I mean, there's not many churches that i know feed people's horses but we do that we do that here at the river and uh, I actually thought I saw the ghost of John Wayne the other day coming to the service, but that was another story. All right, next. Okay, so this is the overview. You can see from the right side where the platform is and then the sweep of the whole field is like a bird's eye uh, view of, of the whole field. That's two acres. I, and look at the parking lot back there. There's the, that's the flag that's going to be the giant Christmas tree. I can't wait to get a nice shot of the snow covering the field. It's going to be pretty phenomenal. But please don't eat the snow. It's like we tell people when you go up to the Arctic, you know, <laughs> watch out where those huskies go and don't you eat the yellow snow. It's, kind of, it's not that this is yellow snow, but it's soap, which might not be bad. Some people can wash their mouth out, come to the church, you know, and, but it, it is kind of soapy. So if you eat the snow, you'll be blowing bubbles by the end of the service. All right, next. Altar calls. People come down and get saved. You can see people come down with moss and all that. We're running buses, you know, every Sunday. And um, we actually had 3,000 registered for Sunday. We didn't let them all in because they didn't want to show their IDs. And we just felt that we have to keep them away. If you don't show your ID... We don't, we're not, we don't want to do it. So when the media showed up, I think it was Channel 10 showed up. They, want, they wanted to help promote, and we said no. They said we were invited. We didn't invite you. What do you mean we invited you? We don't need you. The people, the media has trashed us in the city. Why would we invite them to come and help promote us? We don't need you. Stay away. All right. Next. There's just a shot that I get to see from the back, you know, from all the way back down. You see that. Like, it's just like a, a tower in the middle right at the back of the field. That's not even the back of the field. That's just where the two main center line cameras are. And the field still goes back behind that. You know, only with a nice drone can I show you what's going on there. But anyway, next. Okay, let's talk about this for a bit. Yeah. So I'm happy to report to you. And I'll hold this one up. Let's come back to me. Okay. So these are the audio books that are all out now, which I'm so excited about because you can get these for Christmas. Audio books. Somebody said, I like the books. Well, then order the books. But the audio books are great because a lot of people don't read. So what I did was I hired like top actors. This one alone has like 60 voices on it. 60 voices because there's a lot of events. It's a 475 page book. The same with this one over here. Also, that's 14 hours of listening. This one over here is also 14 hours of listening. This one over here, it doesn't have the time. Oh, seven hours for the Phantom Virus. And the one on socialism, I'm not sure how long that is. But it's short. It's not, it, it'll be three, maybe three hours. Maybe, I don't know. But there's a lot of listening here. So, Killing Uncle Sam. Do we have a couple of clips we can, we can uh, play for Killing Uncle Sam? Let's roll one or two of them. You don't convince people that this war is real. He says, but the media. You know, you created the Star Reserve in 1913 through lies. First, to prepare the United States for foreign war. Under the guise of American defense. The culture is shaped in the universities. Common core. Common core. Common core. Common core. 
They're the ones that teach these kids that you know, America is racist, that this country was founded on oppression and it ruins the environment, and that more than anything, the mind, their own mind, the only ability to think is impotent. So they're being brainwashed. All right, so one of, the, one of the ways I know that I downloaded it, somebody said you would download it, yeah, because I wanted to see that it worked properly, is from audiobooks.com, audiobooks.com, and you can, you can download the book there. I believe it's on Audible. I believe it's on iTunes. So, uh, kidding Uncle Sam, or just go to revival.com and go to our store and order, order that one. Um, uh, do we have another clip? Which one is this one? Uh, Killing the Planet. Okay, so the Killing the Planet, the same, you can pick it up. And if all else fails, contact the ministry. We'll, we'll ship this to you. We'll get it to you. Roll it. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer. And ultimately, to control the weather, and he who controls the weather will control the world. So we, we're not making that up. That's actually the words of Lyndon Baines Johnson, 1962, talk about a satellite that controls the cloud layers. So I'm not making this up. People think, oh, you're conspiracy theorists, you make it up. I don't make anything up. It's all verified with the footnotes. So you're either going to just bury your head in the sand and pretend you didn't hear it and didn't listen to everybody else. That's fine. There's nothing I can do for you at that juncture. I mean, I wish what we wrote here was false. But I promise you, you read the book, you go to the footnotes. If you can find one mistake factually in it, we will correct it at the next printing. And no one's been able to find one mistake, maybe a comma or punctuation mark. But let me tell you, we have the facts. This next one, the phantom virus, which is all about the virus. People say you say the virus doesn't exist. We never did. Why would I write a book over 300 pages of something that doesn't exist? It exists, but it's not like you think. The phantom is the fear where people won't even go and have Thanksgiving with their family because they think they're going to kill their grandmother. Meanwhile, you all know that grandma got run over by a reindeer. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Everybody knows that. They're moaning because Christy Gnomes, is it her mother or grandmother, died? She was 97. And they try to say she died. If she didn't, she was 97. She was old. At 97, you've got to die. Sometime you can't live forever. Okay, so do we have a clip on this one? Yeah, roll, roll on the phantom virus. The World Health Organization is part of the United Nations system. Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci. Dr. Anthony Fauci. We know we need broad scale testing and the ability for contact tracing. If anything kills over 10 million people, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus. So I'm just trying to get information. You know, somebody said you're going to write another book. I don't want to write another book. I've got other books coming out. We've got the new one, Kingdom Business, is coming out January. We've got one on the Holy Spirit working on. And a lot of other books that I want to put out. But as far as these kind of books, I'm pretty much done now. If you can't get the understanding of how the world operates off of this, I'm not doing another one. I'm done now. These books have been the biggest pain of my life. That's all I want to tell you. Publishers, can't stand them. Book distribution, can't stand all that nonsense. And we, we now have found a way of getting stuff out, but these books will live on. But I tell you what, I'm pretty much done. Pretty much done. Okay, then this book, Social Around the Microscope, which is very important. We're going to clip on that. Roll that one, please. Corrupt the young, get them away from religion. Divide the people into hostile groups. Get control of all means of publicity. 
caused the breakdown of the old moral virtues. Vladimir Lenin, 1921. All right, so guys, if you can just put it on the screen how they can get all four of these and we'll run a special, which I'm not sure what that is. I don't even know what that costs, but we'll run a special for people. Get them for Christmas and send them, send them to your friends, send them to your enemies, send them to your mother-in-law or any other outlaws that you might have. Somebody messaged me and said, so I wrote the book before COVID-19. No, right, we started, I started, I started penning the foundation for the book back in February, back in February, started doing the overview. We waited until July to publish it because I wanted the story of the stand because I never write a book with no, that doesn't have positivity in it because I always believe in, I, don't, I never write a negative thing because I'm not a negative person. I'm a positive person and I, I, I deal with the facts, but then I deal with what God's saying. What is God saying to everybody? So, um, all right. You're just showing up the, the one. Guys, who can tell me what one of these cost? What are they, 20 bucks, 19.99? Uh, Bradley, somebody tell me what do they cost? Nobody? I, I don't hear anything in my ear. $26. They vary in price. What? Who charges 45 for a book? That's highway of robbery. It can't be that much. Huh? All right, let me see. Uh, yeah, 1995 is fine. I know that's what the audio book costs. 1995 audio book. Um... You know, some of them, you're talking about the, the study guide or they're being combined with something else. Yeah, I don't see all the prices on you guys. One, two. Is there anybody anywhere? They can give me the total of the four audio books, please. Just add the four books. Somebody add them together for me. I know, I believe when I bought them on, on audio books, I paid nineteen ninety five a book. Well, I didn't really pay for it because I had a free credit and I got the book for free. I don't really pay for anything. I found a way. Yeah, you put in the individual book up. I don't know, guys. I don't really work this out. They do all the stuff. I do my job. But, you know. How much? Is there nobody back in control? Did everybody go home? Huh? There's nobody back in control. Are we just left here by ourselves? Okay, thank you. Luke. You're amazing, man. He, he even, down here, he works with me. Okay, Uncle Sam. Thank you, Luke. Great. What a man. Luke Neese, ladies and gentlemen. A man who thinks on his feet. Uncle Sam's 1995, Planets 1995, Social 1495, and The Virus is 1995. Just add that up and give me a total for the four. And then I'm going to give a special here tonight. I'm going to freak everybody out. Just because I can. So it doesn't matter what price you see. I want this on the website. And I want to put it in the special television series special from Pastor Rodney for Christmas. Offer on this Friday night. This is a Black Friday special sale. And I need somebody to put the link together. Wake them up. Wake them up right now. Tell them to come out of the turkey coma and put a link on the website, please. So it comes to 75, exactly. 
about 75. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, all four books <laughs> let me let me see what people think I should I give it as a special. Let me let me. What are the people? What what do you feel? What do you feel? What do you feel? Oh, they were giving me totals. People were giving me totals. Sorry, I didn't check. All four equals sixty-five. Be purchased separately. Okay. So, what do you think I should offer the four? Come on, tell me. Tell me in the comments. Who? What? What do you think I should offer them for? I mean, it has to be a Black Friday special. Some people say 50, some people say 25. 25 is like giveaway. Do we have a download 39? No, I don't know. There would be no download for 39.99. If they did that, that's a mistake. It's impossible. Somebody said $40 for all four. And that's from Child of the Living God. Somebody said, what, 47 for Black Friday? Yeah, we'll, we'll change it, guys. We'll change it. How quickly can they get a link on revival.com for the special for TV? Who's back there? Wake them up. Wake them up. Oh, they want forty nine ninety nine thrown in with Jonathan Shuttleworth, you arrested my friend T shirt. I don't have those T shirts. He's the one that's making money off of that. People say, Hook us up, Pastor Ronnie, hook us up. Somebody said, If I get paid on December the first, would you extend the sale? This sale will be all the way to Christmas. This sale will be, this will be a Black Friday super special sale through Christmas. Somebody said all four for 50. Somebody said 40 in a t-shirt. Some people 49.99 in a t-shirt. Somebody said regular price. Well, I want to give a, I want to give a deal. Somebody said take 30% off a Black Friday sale. Uh, let me see here. Do 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 I totally said your name. Your name, your name is Child of the Living God. Who? What parent would call you? I name you Child of the Living God. How do you even go anywhere? You at school? What's your name? Child of the Living God. Do you know how you'd be persecuted just from the other kids at school? And he's coming up to the 10 meter line and it's child of the living God and he's got the ball and he's going to run for it. All right. So uh, I know Bradley just uh, texted me. Let me see here. Brad, 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 the great Bradley. The great Bradley. $80, $80, $80 for them, regular price. Okay, Bradley, 80 bucks. That's not a special. That's, that's, 80, that's regular. I'm looking to, I want to cut them a deal. Hey, uh, can you find it? What T-shirts do we have? What T-shirts do we have? Because I'll throw in a shirt or something. Just grab me. Can, can somebody else leave? Stay here. Don't leave. Luke, grab whatever shirts are there. I mean, you can't take my floor manager to go get me shirts. Then I'm left here flapping in the wind here. Folks, this is live television, okay? I know it's not done properly. I understand that. But I'll let all the, the critics have your own show. Okay, the stand T-shirt. Let me see what we can do. Lulu. Uh, somebody said reduced by 1684, night 168. Somebody said they're still laughing about the sad news of grandma getting run over by a reindeer. 
It's a terrible thing to happen. Can I make the deal with the written books? Um, not this week. We are out of print. We are out of print on Killing Uncle Sam, so I have to get that reprinted. Uh, once I, once it get reprinted, we'll work on it. You're working on a product special, Bradley. I'm going to give you a price right now. How soon can we get a link up? Because I want them to be able to go get it tonight. No, I know that. I'm going to give the prize, but I want to see what T-shirts we have so that I can throw in a T-shirt too. And then with the link, they're going to have to click the special and tell them what size they want. Medium, large, extra large, double X, triple X, four X, five X. And then we have elephant size, elephant size. We don't have that. You low on t-shirts. How? How do we get low on t-shirts? How long will it take him to print a t-shirt? Awesome. What do you got? Why are you standing back there? So these are kid sizes? That's all we have left. Kid sizes? How's this going to fit anybody? <laughs> Hold it. Hold it. I just ordered this special from RMI. Honey, have Merry Christmas to you. Looks like, it looks like the Book of Palms. <laughs> we, we, the Book of Palms. Okay, so they're kid sizes. That's just great. And this one, the stand. How long would it take to get some of these? Re, re, huh? Two weeks. Two weeks. What do you got here? How many do we have enough of these? We don't. Oh, this is the River Church one? Well, that's fine. How, do we have enough of these? How many do we have of these? And this one? There's two in the lobby. Yeah, that's what, what happens here, you know, because we have people come through here. People just lift stuff off of the bookstore. They just walk out. We give all the water away for free. We give special... Um, Huh? Yeah, oh, but there's another name. Electro electrolytes. We give electrolytes, which is the Gatorade, which is basically poison. So we actually poison people here yeah, every service. But we try to get them electrolytes so they don't fall over dead because people come here with every kind of disease known to man, and then we don't want them to blame it. We died at the river, you know. But anyway, I'll tell you what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. Okay. I, I, on the T-shirts, it is not going to work right now. On the T-shirts... Let me work with the office, and then obviously you that get the special. Here's what I'll do. Okay. All four, normally 75 or 80 bucks, as somebody said. All four, you can get it tonight for 40 bucks. 40 bucks. For all four. That's going to be a Christmas special. That's, that's a deal. Um, if there was a T-shirt, I'd make it 50. But... 40 bucks and you pay you pay shipping or 50 bucks shipping free so which what do you want 40 bucks and you pay shipping or 50 bucks and we pay your shipping what do you want 50 bucks 50 bucks tell me what what do you think 50 dollars and you, and we'll pay your shipping get it to you these are ready to go these we can mail up monday tuesday and then we'll work something else with the T-shirts. I'm trying to see. Oh, the, the, the thing. 50 bucks shipping free. 50 bucks shipping free. I think it's a deal. Personally, there's a lot of work that went into this, ladies and gentlemen. So you're getting the killing of Uncle Sam. I feel like the home shopping network now. Hold it. Let me do it properly. Killing Uncle Sam, killing the planet, the fan of virus, and social. 
All four for $50 shipping free. Special Merry Christmas from the river. And buy a couple of sets and send it to your in-laws, your outlaws, mother-in-law, or your grandma who's still alive because she didn't get run over by a reindeer. All right. Awesome. We love you guys so much. I'm going to pray for you. And um, that link can go up. Can they have that link up? How soon can the link go up? All four. Remember, shipping included. 50 bucks. Flat deal. Out the door. Special offer. Limited time only. It, it we'll run it up to Christmas. I mean, obviously, obviously, uh, you know, nobody's saying anything. So you here, and you talk to them, but you talk to people, and nobody responds to you? They're waiting for an answer to. Who's, who actually answers to who? Is there some big guy behind the scenes running everything here that I don't know about? Huh? This is like, <laughs> I actually think I actually run the ministry, but I don't. So it's just like, there's like layers of people that are like in charge. So, <sighs> while you're finding out, can we, ro can we let's roll the palm, palm thing again, just while I'm waiting. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim Promised with the promise who wrote these following words. True and international average of pressure. Um, hey, uh, Tony, can you do me a favor? Can you actually find the actual clip where he talks about the palms and actually quotes from the Psalms? Just two. It's a little bit longer. Just while we get the final thing on this, and then I'll play that one more time after that, and then. We'll announce it. We'll have the link up. People can order tonight. Just stay with me. Just stay with me. We're going to have it ready for you just shortly. They're running another golf cart out to the extremity of the, pro of the property. They're fighting alligators just to get through the swamps and then they get back here. So, okay, um, just let him tell me if he found the, 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 the clip. It's on YouTube. I mean, I, I don't know how long it would take him to find it. Can he find it? One moment. Okay, one moment. Okay. By the way, I'm I'm uh, I'm hosting uh, Check the News next week, uh, Monday through Friday, um, and everybody wants me to play uh, uh, you about to lose your job. This is not Check the News. This is just me from a desk. I don't officially sit in that. Day. If I did that, it would look like I was hijacking the show and that I was doing a check a recheck the news and then. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be caught into that. You know. I'm going to help Jonathan next week, but I'm not taking over his show, and I, I don't want to play, play that. That's wrong. I should have sent you the other one. I, th I thought we actually had it, but we probably don't. But we need to get it anyway, because I'm going to play the hound out of it next week. And this one, which roll that one more time while you find the other one. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the promise, with the promise who wrote these following words. True and international average of pressure. Roll it one more time. And if we do, and I'm sure we can. We can proclaim the promise with the promise who wrote these following words. True and international average of pressure. Okay, yeah, play this do, one. This is the actual and footage. I'm sure we can. We can proclaim the promise with the promise who wrote these following words. The Lord is my strength and my shield.
And he probably read from the book of Job. <laughs> As it says in the book of Job. Somebody says, uh, Connor says, Pastor, are we inside Sunday morning? I don't know. Why, why does it matter if we're inside or outside? Why, why does it matter? Do you not like outside? I like outside. I like inside. I don't know. Would it deter you from coming if we inside or outside? If I, if I say we're inside, okay, I'm not coming. We're outside. I'm, I'm coming. Are you nervous that maybe you are more prone to catch COVID inside than outside? If you think that is the truth, you are sadly mistaken. Not yet the river. Okay. Um, do we have anything yet? How long? They're working on it. So what, what, what does that mean? Because I can't sign off until the link's there. They're publishing it right now. Under five minutes. Under five minutes. Okay, great. Yeah, otherwise I just broadcast the whole night. <laughs> I'll be here at four in the morning. I'll have the link for you shortly. Okay. Hey, uh, while they're doing it, uh, let's roll the palmist again. Let's do the actual one and then do the other one that somebody just made, which is pretty hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is the would-be leader of the free world. Roll it. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist, with the palmist who wrote these following words. True international average of pressure. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist with the palmist who wrote <laughs> these following words. The Lord is my strength and my shield. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist with the palmist who wrote these following words. The Lord is my strength and my shield. <laughs> oh, that is like, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> One more time. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist with the palmist who wrote these following words. The Lord is my strength and my shield. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist with the palmist who wrote these following words. True international average of pressure. Um, that was Joe Biden's Thanksgiving speech. So if you go to YouTube and you type in his Thanksgiving speech. But that's the best part of the speech. It goes really bad after that. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Tell me we're ready. We're ready. It's part of called audio books. Well, put the link up. Show me what it looks like. Then I'll talk. All they can, all they can type in is audio books and keyword discount code. All right. Pull it up. Pull it up for me so we can show them. So we, the revival.com website, if you can, can you pull it up? 
Don't make me play the palms again. <laughs> they, they don't have a, they can't do that. Revival.com. Oh, they haven't built the link to pop up yet. For up here, on, the lower third. Oh, on the lower thirds. Okay. Now, you can't take it on the whole screen. Can you just put it on the whole screen? Thank God I didn't eat turkey today. Isaiah, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving went great. By the way, I'm just drinking water from my John Wayne cup. So that's the best you can do there. Okay, the best we can do right now, visit the online store and then go code audiobook. Can you pull that up? Do you see the, how that works for me? Just so I know. Oh, there it is. Wow. Do we have a clapping machine? We can clap there. What's a magazine doing there? Why is that there? I don't want that there. What's that there? Oh, they haven't got the link yet? No, that's wrong. Guys. What's that say there? The one, are you meaning the one on the left-hand side has got the $50? Is that what it says? Is that the f four books? At the, bottom the bottom left. Oh, so when you, go, when you go to pay for it, you say all, promo code audiobooks? Yeah. And then it automatically gives $50 for all four? So you get the discount. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you guarantee me that that's the truth? Yes. So I'm not lying here on television. I don't want to be the government or the mainstream media. We're good. We're good. Uh, what does it look like there, Luke? I'm just checking. You what? It's good. Luke says it's good. Luke Nee says it's all good, works fine. And guys, back in their thing there, remember, I can't hear a word you say. So um, I'm like kind of just flapping in the wind here because I can't still hear. I've got this hearing piece that hasn't worked. I think it worked for about 20 minutes of the whole broadcast. So I've been hearing nothing. The Admiral Crichton here is trying to do a best job, but he couldn't even hear from you either most of the time but um, hey um, it looks like this has been a turkey kind of a program but um, all right let me pray for everybody and then we'll go off maybe you can play uh, uh, let's play can you play anything we can <laughs> are you sure okay please all right play the palm as quickly and then I'm gonna pray because we're gonna need prayer after that and then you can play the blessing, which we wanted to play earlier. And we'll, we'll close out with the blessing. And then Sunday morning, don't miss Sunday morning, 9.30. Whether on the field or in the building, I cannot tell. God knoweth. But when you come, you'll either be on the field or in the building. Everybody says it gets down to 30. That's why I bought heaters. Heaters. Special Heaters. That heat, 12 foot in diameter, heaters, 
and you can wear a sweaters. We've got heaters. All right. Uh, there are, there's the link for audiobook special. Visit our online store. Code audiobook. People just ordered. Tracy says, I just ordered. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy. I'm glad it worked for you. Thank God I can go to bed knowing that I didn't lie to everybody. It says shipping not included. Hey, guys, fix that. Don't worry. When they, when they ship out four, you will not be charged for shipping. Trust me. Trust me. If that, whoever does that wrong, you tell me. I'll be, on, I'll be on Check the News next week, the whole week. You can tell me, and I will ship them to California. No, I'll send them to New York City. And they can live there under de Blasio. Somebody said it says shipping not included. So, okay, that's good. But whoever, whoever said, it didn't matter. Why is church not in the field today? Because we shut down the stand to give everybody a rest. And because everybody was overloaded from Turkey last night and today because they're eating leftovers. I did not feel like speaking to dozing of people snoring under, under umbrellas. And so I thought I'd just come and just do it live. Yeah. Okay. Hope that hope that's good. Did I said we were going to play that thing again? We're ready to play. Just play it, and then we're going to pray because we're going to need prayer after that. And then we'll close out with the blessing. And we love you guys. It says the shipping shows free when you put in the code. Okay, good, 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 good. Very good. All right, roll it. Palms. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist with the palmist who wrote these following words. True and international average of pressure. Let's pray. <laughs> Lord, if ever a nation needs deliverance, it's now. Deliver us from all evil. Father, I pray for each and every person that's watching right now. Thank you for your hand upon them in a strong way. Thank you that you lead them and you guide them by your spirit and your anointing, that you bought them as a wall of fire, that no harm and evil will come nigh to them, that regardless of wherever they find themselves tonight, that you shall sustain them, that you go before them, even as they sleep in the night hours, that you will speak to them, you, you'll You'll talk to them, speak to them in dreams. When they wake up in the morning, they'll know exactly what to do. And Lord, I pray a special blessing upon them. Thank you for your hand upon America, that you'll deliver America one more time as you have each century. And thank you for the angels of heaven that are loosed, even this hour, working on our behalf to cause total victory, we pray. Pray for our president tonight, your hand upon him, supernatural wisdom, upon his family, upon all those that lead the nation in this hour. And we just thank you. Let every plan of the wicked be brought to naught, unravel every plan of the enemy, pull the wheels of the Pharaoh's chariots, and every hole that they've dug for your people, let them fall in themselves. And Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. I pray a blessing upon your people tonight in a special way, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Ronald Phillips says, I'm having a terrible time ordering. Can somebody help Ronald there, please? Somebody said, I just ordered these or CDs, but it said MP3s. Okay. Well, let me, let, me, let me say this. And I understand that. So here's what's going to happen, which my office obviously going to have to realize this. So 
I'm just telling you what's going to happen. This even makes the deal better, okay? Yes, it's an MP3 that you download, but for every download, you'll get one of these, the actual hard copy of the book, free. So you're actually getting two books right there. So I'm just telling you right now, because obviously people want to put this in your car, you can play it in your car, on MP3. I'm going to throw that in. That's actually double for your trouble. So for $50, you get the MP3 download, and we send you the hard thing shipping free. I mean, I can't make it any better than that. And all of you that, that have already ordered, it will, it, will, it will get to you. So are you happy? Is everybody happy with that? I mean, I can't make it any better than that. So you order, you download the MP3 onto your computer, and you fill out your address and everything, and we'll send you the actual copy of the audio, the book. Is that good? Let me hear from you in the comments. Everybody says they're happy. I tried, I told you it was a Black Friday special. And you didn't get the t-shirt, but you got two copies now. One for yourself and one for your mother-in-law. And your grandma, who's still alive because she didn't get run over by a reindeer. Some people are happy. Let me see if they're happy. They're happy people. Yes, we're very happy. Happy, awesome. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Where's the link? Where's the link? Guys, stick it on the screen. Put the link up, please. You get the audio and the MP3. You, get the, you download the MP3 and we send you the audio. Can you order by snail mail? Yes, right. But then you have to, get, you have to pick up your free link. It's so on the screen. Keep it up there. And even when we, ring, when we run the song, uh, The Blessing, you saved it to order tomorrow. Great. Merry Christmas. The link is in the chat. And I'll tell you what you can do, guys. I'm not sure if you can edit after we've left, if you can stick it in the, in the description. Yeah. So the link for the audio clips will be in the description. Look at that. Wow, it's progressing. It's moving faster, ladies and gentlemen. Right there. If you watch the program for another 10 minutes, suddenly the books will appear on your table in front of you. Actual fact, what we're doing, we actually found the coordinates to your house. We have a drone on its way to you right now. If you hear a drone outside the door, do not shoot it down. People are actually flying this to your house right now. Thanks to Elon Musk. I don't know how to make it any better than that. You get two for one. You can't find where to put the code in. You put the code in when you check out. Is that right, Luke? Well, you just did. There's, there's a four CD pack. Yeah, 4 CD, four CD pack. Huh? Come over here. Bring me a microphone. This is Luke Neese who actually added it up because most of the people here are illiterate. They can't read. They can't add. And so, but he, he actually is educated. And uh, he was able to add everything together. He has a calculator and knows how to work that out. Hand him the mic. Yeah. Or tell him how to do it. Tell, do exactly what you do. Just kind of kneel down here. Yep. So, so now you look like Fauci. Okay. Yeah. Sit on this chair. Okay. Well, one second. Yeah. Let me move this out the way. So Sit on the chair. You, I thought it was de dealing with Dr. Fauci, the God gnome. Okay, go ahead. Tell him exactly what to do. So there's two options. Has you got sound there? Yeah, I can hear. You can hear? Okay, good. I'm on. Well, speak into it. So I, you've got two options. You've got the four audiobooks um, as, as one option to click the four audiobook, MP3, CD special, or you can do each book individually and then in checkout. That's when the audiobook code. That's when you put it in, right? Yeah. So you can do this one or add up all of them. Well, why would you do that? Uh, they just made one with four. So yep. where's that now? Right here. All right, good. So that's. Well, tell them how to do that one. Uh, so you follow the link, the store.revival.com, and then at the top, you should have 
you will have the four audiobook MP3 CD special, and then that's what Pastor was talking about. And you about. click on that one. So when you click on that one, then you see Killing Uncle Sam, you swipe that way, Killing the Planet, you swipe that way, Socialism, and you swipe that way. Did I say swipe? Swipe. Fat virus. And then you, 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 you press to buy it, and you put the code in, $50 special MP3, and then we send it to your house. And you're ready to go. Is, is that everything else? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Was there somebody else giving you orders to do this? No, no, I'm just checking. So, <laughs> people, <laughs> people work here. That don't really work for me. They work for somebody. That don't work for me. Just so you know that. <laughs> All right. Some killing, What? Child of the living God says, who's Uncle Sam? All right. Uncle Sam is just a term used in relationship to America. And it goes way back in history to the 30s. It has to do with the war. And everybody wanted to be part of the, the whole thing for Uncle Sam. So it's referring to the United States of America. Somebody said, who is the palmist? Um... I'll take, who is the palmist for $500, Alex? All right. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up now. <laughs> this is going to get ridiculous. It's already 1042. And by the way, check the news. It's coming on tonight, 1130. I can't tell you that it's going to be a great program because I spoke to Jonathan early and he was pretty turkeyed out. But who knows? He could pull something out. It could be great. Who knows? I mean, I'm just saying it. Somebody said, <laughs> the, the palmist is the, the friend of the, of the God gnome. The God gnome. Fauci is a Christmas God gnome, which you really want to get one because it'll keep the CDC away from your house. All right. Okay, that's all we have time for today. Go to the link. It's on the screen. Visit online score, online score store. <coughs> Code audiobook for the four. 50 bucks. You get a download and the actual copy. Ladies and gentlemen, special Black Friday sale. From us here at Revival Ministries in Nashville, we're going to close out the blessing. I love you so much. Thank you for all that's given. I just saw somebody gave. Looks like can Canadian dollars, $20. Thank you so much for sowing. And if you feel like giving while they're doing the blessing, they'll give all information over there. That'll be great. Um, <laughs> okay, Bradley, I'm not sure what you're saying, but you said it's been axed to the description to social board. Okay, I don't know what that means. I'll, I'll read the Book of Palms to find out what you just said. Anyway. All right, we love you. Let's roll. The blessing. Thanks for joining us. Sunday morning, 9.30 is going to be epic. And then Sunday night, we love you. Be blessed. Roll it. This favor be upon and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you, and a thousand generations. And your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you.
are not here playing games. The time is running out. The last few grains of sand are in the hourglass. We still have a job to do. There's millions of people that have never heard the gospel. The ark is filled and the gang clank is down. He is waiting to see who else will come in. The body of Christ, of every tribe and tongue. He said, occupy till I come. A glorious church without spot or blemish. Full of the fire, full of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. But there's one hour left. One more hour of daylight. And then the sun will set forever on the horizon of time. <laughs>